Good evening and welcome to the Board of Selectmen's meeting for Tuesday, June 24th. I would like to call this meeting to order with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I ask that we take a moment, um, just a moment of silence to reflect on our duties as selectmen and for personal reflection. Okay, in accordance to Mass General Law 30A, Section 20E, I announce that this meeting is being recorded by East Long Meadow Community Access Television and the Board of Selectmen's Office. If there is anyone else present that is recording this meeting, uh, please notify me at this time. Okay. We, um, let the record state that the gentleman from the Republic, what is your name again? Uh, ben Lambert. Ben Lambert is recording. Okay. All right. Now, moving on, we have a 6 o'clock appointment. It's a proposal to change the numbering um, on the, excuse me, erect signage on Bitten Drive, Diane Nasa, Nato, Action Business Services at 15 um, Bitten Drive, and James White and Gary Stone, White Stone Partners, 31 Bitten Drive. Are they here? Yes. Okay, please come on up. Hey, thank you. Very nice, you? Meeting you. Hey, nice you? meeting you. Hey, nice meeting you. Good to see you. Hi. Hey. Don't forget that I got out of the drive. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I guess we'll start with the lady first, if that's okay. Absolutely. If that's your pleasure. Okay. Hi. Hi. How are you? Very well. Thank you. And yourself? Very fine. Good. Now, I'm here to, um, because of course you requested me to be here, and I would like to explain that I would like signage mm -hmm. at the entrances of the park to accommodate any problems with numbering. Mm -hmm. And the reason is it would be the most simple and the best solution and the least costly for everybody, including the town. Okay. Because as you well know, when you change an address, and you're not just changing an address, you're changing a building mm -hmm. with tenants, so it's huge amounts of people and money, and we have to change everything. You have deeds, you have, I have leases, I have uh, dealings with the IRS, the state, everybody does. Mm -hmm. And you know how it is when you just change your mail. Mm -hmm. Good luck when you change a number <laughs> because it's going to be monumental. We have websites, we have phone books, we have advertising, we have you name it. Mm -hmm. It is in, in, an involved venture. Mm -hmm. And what about the registry of deeds? I own 15 Benton. Mm -hmm. If you decided to change it to God, God knows what number, mm -hmm. who absorbs all the legal costs and the problems? Okay. Does the town? I Does would. anyone know that? Well, we certainly have been could check with council mm -hmm. after. I would but we're here to listen to what well, you have this, to say. Um, and I'll, was, let me give you some history. Mm -hmm why perhaps the numbering is so inadequate. Mm -hmm. I was the first building on the street. Mm -hmm. My neighbor, not this man, but mm -hmm. the other one, mm -hmm. they were originally part of Industrial Drive. Instead of making them change their number in the beginning of time, mm -hmm. that was not done. <coughs> mm -hmm. And then when they expanded both sides, because it used to be a little tiny cul-de-sac, Mm -hmm. They opened it up, right. and God only knows who allowed that numbering system to go from where McGill is on. Mm -hmm. And then you have another problem at the end of the street, which is uh, Denslow Road, 
you have a building that's allowed to have its major entrance, the its only entrance on Benton, mm -hmm. but their address is 180 Denslow. So anyone <coughs> arriving from that end, looking at numbers, mm -hmm. is messed up from the get-go. Mm -hmm. Right from the get-go, if they come in through that entrance. And that, I'm sure, isn't, isn't even anyone is aware of. But that is something that should never happen. Okay. So, what I would like, if at all possible, and if the town would find it in their wisdom, to um, do the numbering, leave it as is, because it's going to be a nightmare if you change it. It'll be so very costly to your taxpayers, meaning me mm -hmm. and you, that signage could handle it. Just like when you go anywhere, they tell you, uh, like you can use Georgetown condominiums for an example. They have the street and they have an arrow with numbers like say 38 through 45 with a left mm -hmm. arrow and numbers 145 to 250 with another arrow. Mm -hmm. It just helps. That's all people need. I mean, I've been there since 1978. Okay. That's, uh, that's, it, that is my feeling, but I, if <coughs> you do go to the changing the numbers, I'd like to know who's, it, who's responsible for every cost involved. And how do you go to the Registry of Deeds? Yeah. And, you know, mm -hmm. it might make the sale of a building very difficult. Or anything, anything legal is just going to be a nightmare. Okay. I mean, if you've even moved and had to change your address, it's a nightmare. Oh, I didn't have that experience, so mm. all I did was just fill out a card and it was well, done. Mm -hmm. It was very simple, so. Well. You know, I, I see it. I have tenants and I have maybe 15 of them. Mm -hmm. And just the changing for every single one of my tenants is going to be extremely costly. Mm -hmm. Extremely. And I don't feel I should ever have to absorb a cost like that. Ever. Nor should they. And I think it could be rectified with a simple signage. Okay. Yeah. Does that conclude that? So we're going to give him a chance yeah. to say, and then then we'll speak as a board. <clears throat> Hi. Hi, how are you? Good, thanks. We we certainly run into the same issues every day. We have clients trying to find us to to see us to pick up their vehicles or projects that we've completed <laughs> yeah. for them. And if you rely on GPS to get to our mm -hmm. place, which most people do they're gonna dump you at another end of the street. Mm -hmm. So every day I've got the office manager or whoever answers the phone trying to guide somebody in from one end of the street or the other. Mm -hmm. So I recognize that it is a big issue. Um, it was talking to Diane about this. I certainly agree it's a big cost for the business owners to make the change. Mm -hmm. um, also for any tenants that they might have as well. Um, signage is certainly something that we're in favor of looking at because that could direct people okay. down from one end to the other even coming in from industrial so that might be a very good solution if we can get some kind of a uh, proof or layout that we'd be glad to take part of you know helping out with and just seeing if that kind of a setup you know at both ends of the street maybe on industrial would help solve the problem because it is key that we get people to our places and right. even off hours when we're not there to get the phones there are times when people are coming to pick up or drop off things and we need to make sure that they find us because they travel quite a distance to get there. Mm -hmm. So I think um, the signage uh, certainly is one way to look at that. I also agree that if there is uh, a change in the numbering it's going to be you know, affect us probably in many ways other than just um, <clears throat> you know changing the number on the physical building itself but to uh, go through anything that's produced with your name on it and then all the records that are kept throughout the state and you know government records as well so that that would be quite an expense so maybe we can look at the sign as a, an option or signs as an option and go from there okay all right that's it uh, that's what i got all right
Uh, Mr. Gorman? Yeah. Ms. Nader, you, you say you've had that since 1978? Yes. Have you had much problems? There's always, delivery? there's been problems with numbering, of course. Mm. Uh, in the beginning, of course, there wasn't. But uh, as time moved on and yeah. the numbering got more erratic, uh, it certainly has become a problem. And many times, um, you know, I've been in business so long, I'm pretty well established mm -hmm. and people aren't really looking to come in to visit me but okay. it is yeah. a problem I have accountants that rent space for me mm -hmm. but I also have a building with three huge number 15s I mean they're the size mm -hmm. of that East Long Meadow sign on my building mm -hmm. just as a landmark but the numbering is off but part of it is because of what's transpired over the years mm -hmm. You can't allow, I mean, my brother had built a, a building across the street, it used to be old time, and that was 175. Now, how could that be? Yeah. You know, I mean, and he used to be a tenant of mine mm -hmm. until he grew too much, then he moved over. Mm -hmm. But it, you had odd and even both sides. It's crazy. So and it probably really needs to be corrected if it's I so don't crazy. think so. I, I think it's crazy, but until GPS becomes the only way and they take down street signs, I think signage people can still read. Yeah. They have that ability. Mm -hmm. It's amazing, you know, but they do. Just like when we're on a highway. I just came back from Florida and I drove. Mm -hmm. Now I can read signs. I know what they mean. I know what left and right means. It's really a simple very cost-effective solution. It might come down to a matter of safety also, but let me go to uh, Select and Federation. Thank you. Um, I had one question that I might be able to bounce off counsel if I can get his nose out of the book for a second. Um, <laughs> well, he was studying. Say, the example I'm going to use in Palmer and its associated suburbs, if you want to call them that, Three Rivers, Bondsville, they had a problem with fire departments years ago. And they took everybody like from Three Rivers, they put the one, like one prefix pre in front of their number. So instead of your house number was 243, it became 1243. I think Bondsville became like 2243. How does that work with, with like the deeds and with the department, you know, with uh, real estate, if you're talking about, um, you know, the deed to your home and everything? Is that a, is that a big switch to, uh, no? Not really. Um, my understanding of the numbering system on streets uh, is that it's related to some of the infrastructure locations um, such as laterals for water and sewer to tie in where they're located so the numbers sort of indicate where the connections are. At least that's my, my understanding and, and I could be wrong on that. But the change of a street address, a name of a street or the numbering on a street really isn't that big a deal town-wide, it is probably to the individuals who have the street number or the street address. Um, the Registry of Deeds wouldn't, doesn't really identify properties by street address as much as they do by the owner and the you know, designation of the street that the property is located on. But um, the, the biggest issue, if you're considering changing numbers, uh, especially where you're uh, you have numbers that are on the wrong side of the street, which is what my understanding of this situation is, is that the GPS systems create a system, people are used to, to numbers being right, you know, odd, even on different sides mm -hmm. of the street. And so long term, for the benefit of the community, it would be my belief, but I would suggest you check with the police and fire departments and emergency services such as ambulance that these numbers be brought in conformity with the practice and the numbering of the streets in general in the community. Uh, but that's just merely a suggestion. The question I have right now is, is regarding the emergency services, if they needed to find us or anybody, what would they do? They put it into what, the GPS? Or would they just... Yeah, that's fair. That's We're on a regular route. Mm -hmm. for the police department mm -hmm. and the fire department and they know where we are located. Mm -hmm. I certainly would hope they would know where their taxpayers are located in the industrial park. But in the case that somebody from a different community is called in to ask to assist, 
they wouldn't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, they, they may not know. I mean, and this is, mm -hmm. I mean, like you said, it is a problem. Well, I, I think, if you don't mind my speaking, mm -hmm. and I hope I'm not speaking out of turn, but it's been a problem for many years. Right. And who's responsible for numbering the street? Who was responsible? Mm -hmm. Is there, I mean, let's... Mm -hmm. Let's be realistic about this. Uh, who's in charge of doing that? I mean, there is a department, mm -hmm. correct? Who might that department be? Does anyone know? What's Do you question? know? Who's in charge? Who's who, who, who is responsible for uh, numbering the streets? When that, Usually when the numbers happened. are signed by the building department at the time the um, application for the permit is issued. Right. So At least it is currently. I can't speak to what the practice mm -hmm. was 30 years ago. So. Um, excuse me. I will uh, recognize you, uh, Mr. Perrin, from the DPW. Certainly. Current Parent. practice, um, and it may have been delegated from the building department, is typically today the building department will check with DPW. DPW actually generates the number and gives it back to the building department. Okay. Well, when was that oh. done? I don't know. I can't tell. Well, this is yeah. a situation that goes back 30 yeah. years or mm -hmm. better. Yeah. Well, I, I that, did yeah. receive one call maybe 20 years ago from the uh, select board secretary. I don't remember, recall her name, but it was about 20 years ago, and she mm -hmm. said, we're thinking about changing mm -hmm. numbers. I said, have the new guys change theirs. Don't, you know, mm -hmm. I'm not interested. But it's gotten progressively worse. Mm -hmm. And I mean, you can't, uh, you know, and then you have other Benton, you know, those, the housing is all mm -hmm. Benton, whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Benton Estates, yeah. Whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And then you have, um, you know, it's just, I, I think it's something that could be rectified with signage. I really do. And I would hope your police and fire already know. I know they do because we periodically have to send who tenants are. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a general procedure. Mm -hmm. The police and fire request that from you, mm -hmm. and you send it in, and okay. your assessors know who, who you are and who the tenants are because they're happy to tax us. They know where to reach us. <laughs> and, you know, I mean, that's just how it is. I think that. Um, Frankly, that uh, the the best route is signage, because it's it's will be a nightmare. The follow up and the you know I do office work for a living. It'll be a problem okay. all the way through. So we'll take that all under advisement. Um, if there's nothing else to be added from either selectman. Uh, no, I I, I got to agree with her. I think signage be the least, in my opinion. Mm -hmm the least costly because it wasn't their fault to begin with. There's a mess up somewhere way back that nobody seems to know. And I think, you know, try signage and see if it works out. I mean, they don't seem to have a problem now, but like, it, like it, but I gotta reiterate what Angela said. If a fire department comes in from Wilbraham or Ham, then, you know, we gotta have some idea as where to send them down there, you know, because they're not as familiar with these guys. No, I know, but your yeah. police department always yeah. directs that too. Yeah. And they know. So what we'll do is, um, okay, Selectman Federici? I'm, I'm also. Okay, so we'll take that under advisement, I'm sure, um, and we can place it um, back on as an agenda item the and then, um, on the 8th. It would be good. All right. Okay. Should we Thank show you. for that as well? We don't well. need to because yeah. it would just be the Board of okay. Selectmen that was speaking on it. Well, thank We're you very much. We're collecting information right now. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Nice seeing you again. Nice, nice meeting, you. meeting you. It's beautiful. Thanks. Very nice meeting you. Thank you. Okay. We're a little early for the hearing and that has to be done right at 630. Okay, so um, I'll entertain a motion for a short recess, if you could indulge me. So moved. Yeah, second. Second. All in, uh, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. All right. Um, bringing this uh, meeting back to order.
Okay, bringing this meeting back to order at 6.30, we have a hearing with Michael Carabetta and Ben Cody, um, Park Place North and Park Place South on Leo Street. Would you like to? Certainly. Okay. Uh, ben Cody's on vacation. Okay, so we'll hear from you and then we'll hear from any residents as well. So we'll hear from them first and then we'll hear from any residents that uh, would or anybody that would like to speak on it. Yes. Hey, my name is Michael um, Carabetta. Yeah, well, well, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. All right, the clerk needs to Certainly. open up the hearing. I apologize. Rookie mistake. Notice is hereby given that the Board of Selectmen of East Long Meadow will hold a public hearing on closing off the dirt road connecting Park Place, Park Place North and Park Place South, as submitted by Michael Carabetta and Ben Cody. This hearing will be held on Tuesday, July, uh, June 24, 2014, at 6.30 p.m. in the Town Hall Hearing Room, 60 Center Square, East Long Meadow, Mass 01028, as submitted by the Board of Selectmen. Okay. Here, here. Do I need to bang the other? Nothing else? Nothing else. You're uh, again, set. my no, name is Mike Carabetta. Um, uh, I just want to represent this with Ben Cody because he's actually on vacation. So, about a year ago, uh, I built a house in that neighborhood, and uh, Ben Cody also lives in that neighborhood. And there's a little dirt strip that the DPW used to use for an access way between Park Place North and Park Place South. Mm -hmm. So, myself and Ben, we approached the neighbors, we approached the cemetery commission to see if we could, in fact, blow them the seed over that to get rid of that gravel right away if you will um, mm -hmm. it's an unimproved road um, it doesn't really serve any purpose the town doesn't maintain it the town doesn't plow it mm -hmm. so we thought in the best interest of all the neighbors it would be nice just if we stop the traffic from going through there mm -hmm. make it easier on the neighbors that in fact do live there mm -hmm. so that's what the process started about a year ago fire signed off on it police signed off on it dbw signed off on it and then uh, um, i'm told that you know the segment wanted to talk about it so here it is a year later and we're talking about it. Well, no, we actually, it came to us for approval. Okay. And then we actually said we wanted to have a hearing on it because um, <clears throat> while it may be, I think the public has a right to weigh in on Certainly. on things um, such as this. And so that's how we got to here. Okay. Okay. Um, if that's all that you have to say, we're going to invite you. So. Okay, then. We'll invite anybody else up if you want to step back or... I would you, like to, yeah, you, uh, you come on up and you could go back to your seat. Sure. Uh, Hi, would hello you like everybody? Mind introducing I'm, yourself? I'm Marilyn Pooler, and I'm one of the abutters on Park Place, South Park Place, and that's my interest here tonight. Okay, welcome. Thank you very much, Angela. Please meet you. Hi, Billy. Thank you. Short <laughs> so do I. <laughs> I couldn't hear Mr. Carabetta very well, but I did hear him. I'm wondering if I should sit or if I can. Whatever be heard. is your pleasure. Okay, well. The I'll mic is there, so. Oh, I pick. I'm okay. sure. Okay, Kat would like you to speak into the mic. Uh, I think it picks up. Is she being picked up? Can you hear me all right? I can hear it. Okay, okay, can everybody? All right. Well, uh, first of all, I appreciate that you gave me the opportunity to come tonight and okay. that this is a hearing to hear both sides of the story. Mm -hmm. And Mike has presented his side, and I would like to do likewise. Okay. But I, first, before I begin, would like to ask Michael what the purpose is of his uh, desire to close the the uh, dirt road okay. between North and South Park Place, what his motivation is. Well, then, I guess you need to come back up here, Mr. Carabetta. Uh, there's no motivation whatsoever. It's just to make it a little bit more quieter of a neighborhood for the neighbors that are about that that road there's no no motivation other than to make it quieter yeah it's actually gonna cost me time and money so there's no motivation in it for me whatsoever okay. I find that it's very quiet I've lived there for over 30 years and I grew up there as a child mm -hmm. that dirt road has been there since the beginning of East Long Meadow and there's very little traffic very and, little traffic. And that's the point why have it that's what the two well, neighbors what are told the, me. The, the, why have a dirt road yeah maybe why not have a dirt road well I guess it's I guess it's opinion that the, the two neighbors that have bought the property don't don't want the road, don't want the dirt. Uh, road. Who are the two butters? Uh, the people that bought the new house and Ben Cody. Neither of them is here. Well, that's true, but I'm speaking on their behalf. You're speaking on the Smiths' behalf as well. Uh, yes, I sold them the house. I know that you did, and it's been two years, not one, I okay, believe. Well, anyway, so his desire to shut the road, close the road, and put in grass is just aesthetic, perhaps. That's one way of looking at it. Okay. Certainly. Then what's another way to look at it? Uh, which stop traffic, it would give two neighbors that have cars going through their their backyards a fuel, no more. 
there's very little traffic. I can attest to that. Very little traffic. If five, four or five cars go by there a day, that's um, probably the maximum that goes through. I think okay. that, from my point of view, okay. I, yeah, would, I, would. I would say that, <laughs> this may sound a little bit uh, odd perhaps, I think the road is charming. Mm -hmm. I think it's a little piece of history for me, mm -hmm. having grown up in that house um, since I was eight years old. Mm -hmm. Uh, and now I purchased the house from my parents mm -hmm. and moved back there, and we've been there for 30 years. Okay. And we like the quaintness of that. Mm -hmm. We like it that people don't really know that it's there. Mm -hmm. They don't know, mm -hmm. because it's hard to see from eight, yeah. Route 83. Mm -hmm. And so I see no reason why it needs to be uh, grassed over. My concern would be, mm -hmm. if that were to happen, who's going to be responsible for mowing it and care of it, for mm -hmm. it. Part of this, part of the lawn would be part of the cemetery. Correct. And would you assume that the secret, the um, person who does the cemetery would be doing the lawn? They told me they would take care of it. Is that right? They did. Oh, that's news to me. I didn't know that. Okay. Well, nevertheless, um, it's not really all belonging to the cemetery. No, they all to the middle, the meeting of it, and the two abutters are all to the middle of it as well. So the two okay, so the two abutters and the cemetery are going to be responsible for upkeep of that. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, for argument's sake, right now they do upkeep a lot of it already because I think the right of way is 50 feet wide, roughly. I think mm -hmm. the gravel strip is, let's say, 15 feet. So right now the cemetery actually cuts some of it, and the two abutters actually cut mm -hmm. some of it. That's so true. So we're going to take 15 feet more of it and adds basically seven feet to each particular mm -hmm. party. Mm -hmm. Well, I see no reason to do it, frankly. Okay. I'm happy the way it is, and I really must say that I'm disappointed that he would like to try to do that, he would like to attempt to do that. Um, I'm all for leaving it the way it is. And I just might want to add that my husband is unable to come tonight, and he doesn't necessarily agree with me, but he doesn't, uh, you know, he doesn't care one way or the other. Okay. But I think because I lived in the house and I, I just enjoy it the way it is. All right. All right. Well, that's the purpose of hearings. Is there anybody else that would like to speak on this topic? Okay. So I guess, are you going to be asking Mr. Caravetta some any questions? Or are you just going to state your purpose? So come on up and we'll ask the two of them to vacate the seats again. Get your exercise today, Mr. Carabetta. Identify yourself, sir. Hi, Ralph Page, 306 Prospect Street. How are you? Hi. Nice to meet you. Nice to see you. I mean, nice to see you again. Excuse me. Um, I heard about this through the uh, through the agenda, mm -hmm. and my question to the board of selectmen is, um, who owns the property? I don't believe the town owns it until it's taken. I believe, um, being a paper street, that the property owners on either side own to the middle. So, it, it sounds like this is private property, and I don't know when the town started saying that you can't loan and seed your private property. Um, I realize in the north end off of Westwood Ave, there's many paper streets, and most of them you wouldn't even know are there. Unless you bring up our GIS and look, it's a little alleyway in between a couple houses, there's dead end strips, and almost all of them are grassed and loamed and seeded, and they look beautiful. Obviously down the road, if someone chooses to develop the paper street, then they have to put it into the town standards. Then the town has to go to town meeting to take the road for it to become town property for the town to allocate what to do. I, I just, I, I mean, I, I realize the streets, I can't even call it a street because it's a dirt path that's there. Um, but I mean, to my knowledge, it's private property. Um, I mean, I may be wrong. It, it may be, I, I I would ask town council if it's if it's in limbo, if the town owns it, or if the butter's owned to the middle. Well, okay, is that everything that you have to say? That's my thought on okay. it. Thank you. Then thank you very much. I, I'd like to ask a question. Uh, sure. Mr. Page. Mr. Oh. Gorman would like that. Selectman Gorman would like sure. to ask you a question. That street goes from where to where, the paper street? 
Which one? Uh, Leo Street, I believe it goes north. from uh, Park North to Park South. It runs right along the back side of the cemetery. To the town yard? It no. Used to the town it used up, to. It used to run it up to anymore. the town yard. I think that's why that's what it's, its original purpose was to access the town yard. But the town yard does not use that as a right of way or an access at this point. And even though it's on there as a paper street, I mean, you still can't uh, construct a structure or anything like that on it. Um, I, I, it just, like I said, fencing, stuff like that is not allowed on um, paper streets. Um, but So that went right to the back of the town yard at one time? Yes, at one I believe time. It goes, um, many, many, many I believe the paper ago. street goes right up to the back of it. And, and that's grass then now? Yes. Yes, it is. Yeah. We put the grass in. Um, I don't know. My my understanding is that the the uh, cemetery owns halfway to it, and whoever owns those lots own to the other half, only for the purpose of uh, they could put something on according to the middle of the road, uh, you know, sidage for the yard. That's where they would consider going by. I mean, you're on. Yeah. You're on the it, the, from what I understand, like I said, is basically they're both properties on up to the center strip in that right of way. Yeah. Um, I mean, if they were to put a, a garage street, on one of those houses, they they could go from the center of the road would be their side lot. No. No. They no. Have to go from the paper street line. From the paper there street. Is a possibility right. Somebody could develop the road if someone owns. So how property. wide is that paper street? How wide is it? Yeah. I think it's forty feet. Forty feet. Certainly correct. Yeah. 40 feet wide? Yes. Um, 40 feet wide? Yes. Um, I think we need to be sure because it seems that I'm getting different information. I'm sure it's on the GIS. Okay, so we'll have to research that and get some more information. Do you have any further questions? Oh, okay. uh, Select Mr. Federici. I was just curious if, if Town Council could shed any light on the, fa on the ownership fact. The only thing I have is the material that I received from the uh, Board's um, staff today regarding this, which is one of the documents I received is a, a letter uh, dated September 13, 2012 from Frank Morandi, Assistant Town Engineer, indicating that to the best of the department's knowledge, this is not a public way, that it's a private way and therefore is not something that would have, the town would have any right to really discontinue. You don't have any interest in it at this point. If his impression is correct, and it is a private way, then barring some quirk in the deeds to the chain of title, to the abutters to this Leo Street, those abutters would own to the center of the way, and each abutter would have the right to travel on Leo Street to reach his or her property so that if what's being proposed were to be accomplished, it would seem that the Board of Selectmen or the Board of Public Works would be involved. It would be title examinations or by the current owners, an agreement among the current owners to give up their rights to access this street and then they would own to the center, and then if they could make an agreement as to how they wanted to landscape or treat it, that would be the way to go. Now, that's based on just Mr. Morandi's letter saying that it's not a public way. And if it's not a public way, then it's really not a way that's under the jurisdiction of the town. Okay. Okay. Now, with that being said, Thank can you. You, you're welcome. Um, can we check the to dot those I's and cross those T's to see who, who it owns to? Uh, can we examine the, examine the titles? Well, I, I think the issue for the, for the board's perspective mm -hmm. would be for the board to request a confirmation from the town clerk as to whether this portion of Leo Street is a public way. Mm. If his records do not indicate that it's a public way, then it should be the position, I think, of the board or a considered position of the board could take to say, you have no jurisdiction, and leave it to the abutters and the people in the neighborhood to see if they can work out some agreement to accomplish the goals that they want to accomplish. Hmm. I can check with the so I guess it would go back to why, 
why did it come before us in the first place? I'm, I'm guessing it was petition. It, it's been brought forward by someone. To okay. Be considered by so, the so, the so we're here. So, I would make I would entertain a motion um, <coughs> to make sure that we receive a confirmation from the clerk, town clerk, as to what the ownership of if this is a public way or a private way. No, so moved. Is there a second? second. Any d further discussion? Mm -hmm. I guess. Like to something. Uh, too late. Mm -hmm. All right. uh, wait a minute. I'm not sure. Hold on. Just one minute. Let me think about that. Let me finish the motion first. All right. It's been uh, for a second, a moved and seconded discussion uh, from the, only, the board. The only discussion I had was obviously if it turns out that it's a private way, then then really we would have no more involvement in it. So we, you know, because it's not a. It's not under our purview. Okay, set. All yes. in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, what would you, the hearing hasn't been closed, so yes, you could say something, yes. Thank you. I'm wondering about um, if there would be any issue that anyone could think of in terms of emergency vehicles mm -hmm. coming in. How, you know, there'd be no access other than from Route 83 down okay. South Park Place, and the street is very narrow. I don't know how um, you know fire engine could <laughs> they could get down the street. I don't mm -hmm. know. It's okay. just very narrow, and I'm worried about that too. You're worried about, I'm that, too. about that. If, okay. if I may, through we'll the chair, take that quickly. I'll make a brief advisement. Okay, uh, Selectman Federici. Well, I was just going to say that Mr. Carabetta had noted that this has already been okayed by police, fire, and DPW. But so that I was assume over fire. A year ago. But yeah, I say that. Yeah. And you know, we, 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 we can, get, we can have it checked out. The fire department will travel a paved road. They're not going to travel on the road. Okay. Well, first, first of all, we'll we'll find out if we have jurisdiction through the town clerk. And if we do, then we will re revisit that and okay. we'll get this done and taken care of. Because um, it, it really has been a long road. I do recognize that to you, Mr. Carabetta. Um, and I certainly am taking into advisement your concerns as a, as a taxpayer. Um, but if we have no, understand please that if we don't have jurisdiction mm -hmm. over it, and if that's true, it really <laughs> shouldn't have come here. Um, but we will make sure that we get down to the bottom of it at this point. Yep. Are we good with that? Yep. Okay. Thank you very much Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Mike. No problem. Well, thank you. He'll close it. Yes, the public hearing is now closed. Excuse me? No. How about that? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. No problem. Thanks. I think better Okay. We're just a little bit late um, uh, for Mr. Uh, Robert Peer, uh, Parent. He's our superintendent of public works. He's going to talk to us about the water and sewer agreement and the Elm Street construction project and DPW vehicle request. Good evening. Good evening. Good to see you again. Good to see you. Good to see you. So the DPW, if it's okay. Yes, please. Thank you. Um, if the DPW has a couple of items on the agenda this evening. The first one I'd like to bring up is that um, we are requesting that the Board of Selectmen as co-signatories to the agreement between the Town of East Longmeadow and the Springfield Water and Sewer Commission. Um, we're requesting that the Board of Selectmen um, execute the agreement to extend the existing contract with Springfield for another five years. Um, the Board of Public Works has already voted um, upon that on the 27th of May and has already executed the agreement on behalf of the Board of Public Works. Um, the amendment is a fairly simple amendment, um, and Mr. Dunny, you can speak to it if you have any questions, but it's essentially a time extension of the existing agreement. It doesn't change any terms and conditions of the agreement in any way. Okay. And what is your timeline that you need to have this done? Sooner than later, and I apologize for not bringing this to the board as mm. soon as I should have. Um, I was originally um, 
my, own, my, my impression was that it was just the Board of Public Works that would sign off on it, but as I dug deeper into it, I recognized that the Board of Selectmen and the Board of Public Works had to both execute mm -hmm. the documents. And I apologize that I should have gotten it to you in advance mm -hmm. of July 1st um, to give you a you know meeting cycle or two to get through the process. Right. Um, so this have, would be our first read on it? Correct. Okay. I have shared a signed copy, executed copy by the Board of Public Works with the Springfield Water and Sewer Commission to let them know that it's moving through the approval process mm -hmm. and haven't made any commitments to them in terms of, you know, when the Board of Selectmen would be in a position to execute the document. Okay. Um, so I think we're, I don't think we'll have any issues with Springfield Water and Sewer Commission because, again, they understand that we're moving it through the necessary process and I've committed yeah. to keep them informed as to how the process is, is going. All right. So that was the first one. Okay. Um, the next item I had was to give you an update on mm -hmm. the Elm Street reconstruction project. Um, Yay. Probably as many people in town have heard and have read, hopefully, um, Elm Street is, is, is scheduled for a full reconstruction, um, mm -hmm. consisting of what is known as a reclamation process where Palmer paving will come in and they will essentially rotor till or pulverize the surface material down to a depth of 16 inches mm -hmm. to improve the quality of the gravel that's underneath the existing road base, which is a big part of the problem really, the, the, the quality of the gravel that underlies the pavement. They will then uh, place two layers of pavement on top of that reclaimed or pulverized surface. Um, the schedule for the project is that we have been adamant with Palmer and they've been very agreeable that we do not do any work south of Maple Shade before July 7th that we get through the 4th of July pay, uh, parade with no impacts other than painting of utilities on the street and things like that that you may have seen already. Mm -hmm. um, we expect and we'll be confirming this in a meeting with Palmer tomorrow that very shortly after the 4th probably as soon as the week of July 7th they may start some of the heavy-duty activity where they start bringing in the equipment um, Backing up a little bit, the process takes place in a couple of different steps. The first step that you're going to see is where they take the existing structures that are at grade right now, the sewer manholes, the water gates, things like that. They need to lower them at least 16 inches below grade so that when they come through with the pulverizing, the reclaiming machine, that they don't damage those structures. So step one, they'll be digging up each one of those structures just selectively around the structure to either remove the cover or lower the cover. Step two, they'll be doing the reclaiming process where they essentially turn the existing street surface into gravel. And then step three and four <coughs> is where they put the pavement back in place. They will recontour the roadway to create a good cross-section of the roadway. They'll then place the binder course and then they'll place the, the top course. Um, and there will be time intervals in between each one of those steps. Um, it won't all happen, um, you know, day after day, so I, I expect um, Again, step one is lowering the structures. That will probably take upwards of a week. The reclaiming process will probably take several days. It won't take weeks to do. And at that point, um, the residents will be driving on a gravel surface. It'll be a gravel surface that's flatter and smoother than the existing surface on, on Elm Street, but it will be a gravel surface. Then Palmer will come in and put the binder course down, and that, will, that could stay for a week or two, while they then have to bring the structures back up again to where the final grade of the roadway is going to be. And then the final course will be put on and the, the street will be striped and it'll be better than new at that point. Better, certainly much, much better than it is today. And we expect that start to finish, that's probably about a month long process. So, you know, it, there will be significant disruption to residents in town for, you know, most of a month. Um, the worst disruption will be over a couple of weeks where the structures are lowered, the road is reclaimed. Once the binder course gets put in place, the road is flat at that point. There may be raised structures that you, you're probably f fairly familiar with driving over. And then finally, the, the final course of paving will be placed. Okay. And so we've, you've sent it in the reminder already? It's been in the reminder, correct. Okay. And each individual person on that road has been received a letter of some sort from you? They haven't individually. We're, we actually talked this evening with the Board of Public Works about reaching out. I don't know if it's possible to go through the town notification um, you know, electronic notification process to see if we can get the word out. The, the question that came up at the Board of Public Works meeting tonight was, you know, will there be impact on people getting in and out of their driveways, for instance? And there, you know, there certainly will be when there's a piece of equipment in front of their driveway, mm -hmm. and that will happen. There'll be a dump truck in front of the driveway, there'll be a reclaiming uh, vehicle in front of the driveway. The street won't be shut down for any periods of time, but at least one lane will likely be shut down 
during the construction process. And there will be delays. There will be times when the contractor has to move equipment around and all traffic may stop for five minutes or ten minutes while they're re, you know, remobilizing equipment. So we're, we're strongly encouraging that people find different ways to get through <coughs> town and get to Springfield during that construction interval because there will be delays, without a doubt. Yeah. Uh, selecting Gordon. Bob, they're they're gonna they're gonna use the grindings from the road for the base. That's correct. What uh, they they're not milling the roadway, which may be what you're thinking yeah, of, right. where they they grind up just the pavement and <coughs> recontour. They're actually taking the pavement, which is essentially gravel or or aggregate, yeah, and breaking that into small pieces and mixing that into the gravel underneath the roadway. All right. How much of a base? They're putting, I believe, six. No, this will, what's there right now is on average four to five inches, and they're putting four and a half inches back at this point. Yeah. Uh, we have some cases where it's as much as six or seven inches, but in general, and for you know, for the for the traffic, uh, the, the duty of the traffic and the number of vehicles, you know, pavement depth between four and five inches is, yeah. is what we'd recommend. Are you going to grind half half of the road first? So people can do the other half, and then so um, I expect as, that because you said there won't be a disruption. There too there, much of a disruption. Oh, there's going to be a disruption. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, I, I, yeah, I know there is. And to, to downplay that would be a sin. Um, I agree. Yeah, I think there's going to be major disruption. Yeah. I, and I, I will learn more when we start talking about the details of Palmer's yeah. schedule tomorrow. But I expect they will likely break the road into segments and then probably do one side of the segment and then the other side of that segment. And that might be a day segment. They might go up the left side in the morning and the right side in the afternoon or something like that. I don't expect yeah. they're going to go the entire length of the street in one pass. Would it be better for you to block the whole street off? Because I, I worked on construction. I know how <coughs> tough it can be people, you know, when you're operating a backhoe or a roller and people are pulling out the iron nail. You know, there's no other way we can direct, you know, divert yeah. the traffic. The, the challenge we've looked at it and we've actually met with um, the city, I've met with the city engineer in Springfield, for instance, to mm -hmm. talk about the impacts on Springfield because it will impact them as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There really, unfortunately, is very little detour ability. Yeah. You have yeah, Maple right. Shade as a cross street and that's it. So given the number of residential developments that exist between Maple Shade and when it turns into Cooley and Springfield, you know, there's a lot of local traffic that one way or the other you will have to continue to main traffic through there. No. Ideally, you'd have a network of roadways where you could detour traffic around, but the, it doesn't exist, unfortunately. Yeah, what time will they be working on that from, from like 8 to 5? Because, you know, you know, 5 o'clock traffic is right. there. Mm -hmm. um, I would expect probably 7 to 5. 7 to um, 5? Yeah. It may be shorter some days, um, mm. but I wouldn't expect it to be any longer than that. Mm. Um, if, and if, if there's any reason, for instance, say they're, Say they're putting the final, the, the most important part of this whole project, or the most, I want to say, most, most sensitive part of this project is the final top course of pavement. Yeah, right. And at that point, you know, we want to keep vehicles off that pavement as long as possible to get it, give it adequate time to, to cool down so that it can bear the weight yeah. of the vehicles. Um, so, you know, that's the point where we're going to have to be very careful about managing traffic to keep the vehicles off the, off the pavement as long as we can. Yeah, the other question I want to ask you, how about, like, water services and stuff? You know, if we're digging across or gas gas line, the we have notified the gas company. They have indicated that other than lowering their their shutoffs, which they have to do, they have no plans to do any work within Elm Street. Um, they will likely, um, as they often do, once the reclaim work is done, they'll likely get back out there and essentially sniff, look for gas leaks at that point, and if there's any issues that need to be dealt with. That's the time to deal with it while the road surface is still gravel, as opposed to when the final surface is put in. So we've we've been pushing them very hard to make certain they identify any problems that they have now. Um, likewise, we have TV inspected all our pipelines, all our sewer pipelines, all our catch basins, et cetera, to to make certain they're in good shape. Um, we have a couple of repairs that we'll be making as part of the ongoing work, but mm -hmm. our goal is not to go back to that street for any time in the, in the yeah, near future. Is that specified to like the phone company or gas or like, that they they got to do something now and they can't go back digging up yeah. a new road within five years or so? The, the challenge working with the gas company is they have, as I understand it, regulations that require them to respond during an emergency. Yeah, right. And that bar of what an emergency mm -hmm. is has gotten lower and lower over the years. Yeah. 
Um, so if there's a gas leak in the street, it could be the day after we pave, they're going to go out there and they're going to dig yeah. up the street and fix the gas leak. Um, unfortunately, that's why we're pushing them to make certain they identify as much as they can any problems up front. Yeah. But mm -hmm. um, if there's a problem, we can't and we don't want to keep them out of the street because you know dealing with a yeah. gas emergency is much more important, yeah. unfortunately, than than maintaining yeah. the the paving. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, Bob. Okay. okay. Anything else for the nope. Okay. Right, thank you. And the next. Um, the other item I believe that's on the agenda right now is just following up on an email that I'd sent to Mr. Bro regarding um, any surplus of vehicles that might be available um, to assist the DPW down the road. Um, you may or may not be aware that we had received um, several years ago two surplus vehicles from the police department, two sedans. Um, they are both in very difficult shape at this one at this point. One of them is a 2000. Uh, Crown Victoria. It has 165 miles, 65,000 miles on it. Um, we have done a fairly thorough inspection of it recently because of, of problems that we've had, and we find that the, the frame is completely rotted out in several locations on that vehicle. We are not attempting to drive that vehicle any longer. We are using that vehicle essentially as spare parts for the second vehicle that we're continuing to drive, um, and that's a 2001 Crown Victoria with 145,000 miles on it. It has many mechanical and electrical issues that we deal with every day, and at the moment we're dealing with them, but it's becoming more and more difficult to maintain that vehicle and, and get parts for that vehicle. So it, you know, it could be a week or it could be a year that we end up having to park that vehicle as well because we can no longer maintain it and keep it running. Mm -hmm. So we just wanted to, to speak up and say if an opportunity arises, this vehicle, just for your information, um, prior to my arrival, one vehicle had been used by the former superintendent, uh, Mr. Bermaski. Um, I, since I came on board, have not been using a town vehicle. I've been using my own vehicle. Mm -hmm. um, that's allowed me to then, as we lost one of these two vehicles, then allowed uh, Bruce Fenney to utilize the second vehicle. Mm -hmm. Bruce, as you know, has lots of different projects going on concurrently around the town, and having a way to travel around town is pretty important for Bruce. So he's driving the second vehicle now. Um, and if we were able to receive a surplus vehicle, it would be a vehicle that he would then utilize. It wouldn't be a vehicle that I would be use, utilizing. Oh, uh, question. Um, how, when did you receive them? Do, I, and you might, I know it might be before your time, but yeah. just trying to get a little historical information. I'm not certain if Mr. Federici or Bro have any estimate of when that might be, have been. No, not off the top of my head. No, I, I know, uh, Mr. Gromowski had the blue car for quite a while. I think the whole time I've been on the board. Okay. So that's it's over five years. Um, and the white, you know, the other car, your pocket parts was the one that Bruce was driving before Correct. the white one. Yeah. Yep. Uh, oh, so like did they approach you with the two police cars that they just auctioned off uh, ahead of this? I mean, no, we just auctioned two cars off. We could have let you. It, it may have been essentially communication passing, you know, we, I believe this note we sent out, to, it became apparent to us about a week, week and a half ago that the white vehicle was on its last legs. And at that point, um, we put our hand up and that may have been after the auction it was. was. It was. Hmm. Okay. All right. Anything else? Um, if and I don't want to drag this out any longer. If you'd like a quick update on the pool, the oh, tennis court, or the fire station, I can give you that as well. That would be mm -hmm. fabulous. Okay. Since you're here. I don't want to um, to take anybody's um, thunder, but I do want to uh, report that the pool is in service, was put in service, as I understand, yesterday, and is, is actively being used by the Recreation Department. Um, so that project went very well, and it was done on schedule, on budget. Um, it was on budget? Absolutely, on budget, yep. Okay. The old fire station, um, that project um, has was originally thought to be a roof repair project and based on further review, the problem was actually not the roof membrane, it was the, the parapet wall that the roof membrane attached to. So that project was repackaged as a masonry repair project. That project was put out to bid, um, contract was awarded within, well into budget actually, and the work in that is scheduled to start July 7th. Again, we're telling everybody stay away until July 7th. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, can you tell me how much that was? I believe that was $16,000 and change against okay. a... It was 30, was 30, I think it was 30,000, yeah. 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 And I, I will note that, you know, 
oftentimes in masonry repair, once you open things up and the contract was written that way, the ability to, if we find a problem, we have the ability to ask the contractor to fix that problem. That's the time, you know, we, we don't anticipate the, the budget is going to be spent, but on the other hand, we would not be surprised if that $16,000 increases to some other number mm -hmm. once we're actually able to open up, because you can't see behind masonry. Once you open it up and see what's underneath it, you oftentimes find other issues. Yeah. Okay, so, so is the roof actually going to be replaced at all? No, the or parapet no. wall, it's which the was the walls. problem. People looked at the inside of the of the the the, the building and they saw water coming through the ceiling, mm -hmm. and they assumed that it was the roof that was a problem. Mm -hmm. In fact, it isn't the roof; it's the masonry. And there are, while we're doing masonry repairs, there's a couple of other masonry issues. You might notice that there's a small sapling growing out of the side of the building. Mm -hmm. Part of the scope of the work here is to remove that and repair the masonry and repoint it. So. It was an opportunity to get in there and anything that's masonry related while it's open, come in and make those repairs. Are they going to clean up around that building before 4th of July? The grass and the uh, bushes? I mean, I was looking at yep. that the other day. I think, and others can jump in, whether that has historically been the JC's responsibility or I'm not sure. Not. <coughs> I'm not sure. I'm not. I will. Can we look into that, sure. please? <coughs> so we want our town looking sharp, uh, you know, all the time, but especially during Fourth of Correct. July when we show it off. Exactly. And the last item, the tennis court project, um, bids were received, were awarded. Um, I don't have the numbers with me under budget, um, not significantly under budget. You know, it's going to be a tight job to manage to keep that job mm -hmm. on schedule and on budget. The one of the items that, that the DPW is doing to help to reduce the cost of the project is doing all the fence-related de uh, demolition. Um, so we are going to be starting that demolition work this week and next week, now that school is out. And then the contractor is going to be starting in earnest after July 7th again. So okay. you'll see activity of our crews over the next number of days, and then you're going to see some heavier activity after that. Yeah, I was just going to ask you about the fence and about your answer. <coughs> right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. And you'll get back to us with regards to um, who's going to take care of that outside of that department. building. Correct. That would be great. Okay. All right. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Welcome. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Um, our next appointment is with our town accountant, um, Thomas Florence, and uh, who is our clerk, treasurer, collector. Uh, with regards to bonding, our ear are those parties here. Okay. Will Tom Caliento be joining you? Um, I talked to him. He didn't know if he was, was going to try to make it. Okay. Well, he said he'd do the best he could to make it. Welcome. We're talking about bonding. Don't you think our accountant should be here? Uh, the town accountant had uh, previously expressed that when it comes to it, he, he was here at the last meeting to give the board the overview. Mr. Florence couldn't make it, but when yeah. it comes to this part of the process, it really is under the treasurer, so that the explanation should be coming from the treasurer. Okay, and so then why was he on the agenda then? Because he was originally going to be on the agenda in late in the day. Uh, he uh, indicated that he would not be able to make it. Okay. Not okay, but we're moving on. Go ahead. Yes. So what we have is a bond anticipation order ban. Mm -hmm. um, went out to bid last week and got a very favorable rate. 1% okay. coupon rate, which is tremendous. Okay. It's for the uh, a bar end of the Pinell swimming pool and of the Harkness Road pump station. So the total amount of bar end is $1,181,082. And what we have working with our financial advisor, with bond council, are final documents uh, that need to be signed at a board of selectmen's meeting. And what I did is uh, there's, there's five separate sections. Of, of what needs to be signed, and I made a, a copy and explanation of what each one of those sections are. Thanks, Billy. And this is, um, we, 
you know, just much like the past, we've uh, six or seven borrowing since, since I've been here. And this is the standard procedure to finalize the process, uh, to return the documents to the financial advisor, and then the funds can be released to us. And this is the, uh, the last part of the process. All the requirements went through bond council. And I don't know if Tom had mentioned when I was away a couple weeks ago, extensive uh, analysis, uh, what's, what's needed based on the borrowing, um, the vote at the town meeting when this was approved, to uh, official statements, financial statements of the town. Um, and what I also have here is a sheet from Standard & Poor's, which lists what our favorable rating is, and, um, and it cites the town's um, um, solid financial standing. Um, basically, it's low risk. Uh, we always pay the money back. I mean, so, uh, and, you know, we have talked about it before with our bond, our, our bond upgrade, that the, um, a lot of the positive financial stability of the town uh, gives us a lower rate to borrow. So we get a lower rate and less short-term interest to pay back. So that's on this uh, uh, this rating sheet here. So with that that being said, uh, I don't know if you want to just go down. I know what we've done before is just start with the note and and just go down and. Uh, and there was no way to have supplied us with this information prior to this meeting and you're really no, just, I just got it overnighted to me and I received it Monday and I did um, I made a copy for uh, and mm -hmm. uh, forwarded this to uh, to Nick uh, midday Monday what right when I received it mm -hmm. this part of the summary part the other stuff is the detailed uh, analysis of the pages uh, uh, the vote of the board, the signature litigation, tax certificate, and basically the work that's that's done by bond council and mm -hmm. by our financial advisor on our behalf mm -hmm. to solidify the borrowing of money uh, for these two projects. Okay, let me ask any questions from you, Selectman Gorman? Yes. Because I have some as well. Uh, and then I'll go for this point. bond rate, AA A plus, the mm -hmm. accounting department have anything to do with this? to get that rating or just your department? Uh, it, it, it's a team effort from the financial advisor uh, to the treasurer's department to the, to the accountant's department, absolutely. It's uh, everyone uh, together. Uh, the financial statements, the audits, uh, it's the, the, the balance sheet, the ratios uh, of long-term debt, the borrowing of that, uh, free cash, stabilization funds, that all goes into to that. And the, the accountant's office is a big part of that, yep. So uh, this was one of the lowest, uh, according to the paper, huh, that we've had in East Long Meadow? Yeah, this is, uh, you know, financial advisor said this is of a historic low interest rate, which is, again, a combination of two things. The bond market, as you know, Paul, it's, uh, that's just the economy now, the way the, the bond market is, uh, coupled with the financial stability of the town. Um, and what the rating agency liked about East Long Meadow is, is the strong financial statements, but the growth projection of the town as far as uh, if it's a, you know, Bay Path uh, to other projects coming in to uh, some um, uh, subdivisions that we have out there. So that all factored into the favorable vote rate. Uh, Tom, that delivery date on, on this paper right here? Yeah. The delivery date is 6.30? Right. So we got we to gotta move on it. Then yeah, it's next morning. Tuesday. And it's, you know, the, uh, excuse me, next Monday. Monday yeah. And that's when the, the the money will be wired into our bank account. All right. So, all right, thank you. Skin. Yeah, Slap you're welcome. Hey. Um, I'm I'm really all set. I mean, this you know, um, obviously, this is the hard work of everyone, you know, yeah. including appropriations, which you know I don't know has been mentioned, but obviously by keeping our free cash and stabilization at a certain amount, which allows us to get a favorable <coughs> bond rate, and as painful as it is during budget times that yeah. they're, they're, this is where you sort of see the rewards of uh, yeah. of all those efforts by everyone involved. So. Yeah, that's a good point. It is a, a, you know, a team effort from a lot of people. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, well, call me simple, but um, I thought the pool was going to be paid with a certain fund. I didn't realize we were going oh, oh, to have to borrow to do It was this. a combination of two. There were CPA funds 
mm -hmm. uh, $400,000 of CPA funds uh, we're going to pay for the pool. The total project of the pool is 850000 And it was uh, agreed to at uh, town meeting that 400000 would be financed with CPA funds and 450000 would be done with general obligation bond funds. That's why it's so important to go to town meeting. <laughs> That's correct. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Right on. All right. And so at this point where we're at now, we got a nice rate. Yeah. Um, you know, beautiful rate. I, you can do much better whatever town you live in. Okay. All right. So um, you were starting to go through your list of things that you yeah. have given us. Yeah, exactly. The, the first part is the note itself. Mm -hmm. And what that requires, and I've already done the town seal, requires this, a treasurer's signature. And then there's three lines. Uh, I don't know if you want to go up to the top, but Chairman mm -hmm. Brooks, because you're the... And then to have... Well, I, I'd like to read this before I sign it. Um, Okay. But I certainly will pass it off. Yeah, that was part so. of the package there, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, thanks. When you say it's part of the package, this is the first time I've seen this. Is that oh, atypical? It, it, well, that? it wasn't our final do yeah. that. Okay. Well, I didn't three. receive it, um, so. Well, it's right there. That's parade orders. Oh, right in the front. You got your hand right on the, the front page. This? Yeah. No, I'm talking about <coughs> this. Yeah, that's right there. Okay, apparently we're, we have separate, different packages. Okay. The, note. the second part, the vote of the Board of Selectmen, that's something that, that required only the clerk of the board to sign. And what that does, it uh, accepts and approves the terms of the bond. And again, the procedure is uh, it asks for the clerk for the board signature. Mr. Chairman, I have a question for the clerk. Treasurer. Go ahead. Um, the vote of the board, is there specific language that needs to be adopted? The board is not taking a, a vote. Um, th there's not no, no, any specific language. I think you just have to, uh, I think I, what's been done in the past is just a, a vote to approve. <coughs> um, I think there's a, if there's language there, but to, just to approve the terms of this bond. I just recall. It, 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 wouldn't there need to be something reflected that the board did take that vote? <laughs> yeah, and I, that, that's included. Yeah. I suppose we could enter this. <clears throat> as far as the, um, I don't know, Madam Chairman, if we want to, if we have to, if this is representative of the vote of our board, mm -hmm. we've got all these conditions. Conditions. <laughs> so and I've seen this too, right? Oh, no, that that we just got yesterday. You know what? It, it was my decision. I, I I didn't think you needed to see. You know, f I was trying to make it, you know, 50, 60 pages of, of the, uh, the documents. I just gave you the the first part, which is the you know the summary part of the uh, certificate. You know, what? I'll let you go ahead and uh, go ahead and finish your um, presentation. At some point, I think um, it would be wise to, at least to give uh, Selectman Gorman and myself a chance to look over these documents, and then we will um, proceed uh, uh, whatever you need uh, accordingly. Um, but go ahead and with your um, presentation. Okay, well, the next part, again, going down this list of wishes yeah. to get signatures. Mm hmm Yeah. And that's all you need? Uh, at this point, yeah, and, and then the, the vote of the board, you know, for okay. favor. And so yeah. we'll probably take that up um, after we sure. take a little short recess and they give us a chance to look at those documents. And this needs to be done on the 30th? Um, By the 30th, because our next meeting is until July 8th. Yeah, according to this. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, I was been good to have it all signed tonight and then they overnight it to the financial advisor tomorrow. And then uh, to uh, 
wire the funds into our bank account for Monday. Okay. All right. Okay, the next part is the signature right here of the official statement certificate. Okay. It establishes the notes as valid obligations of the town and that the official statement properly represents the term of the loan of the town's finances, debt, tax base, and management. That is, and, uh, the, the official statement is a 44-page document that, ex that, that explains the, it recaps the financial snapshot of the town. Okay. It includes uh, ratios, financial statements, mm -hmm. uh, corporations, 10 largest taxpayers, for example. Um, just, a, just a, a ton of financial information about the town. All right, and the next one is? Mm -hmm. Is the tax certificate. It's a certificate that establishes the tax-exempt nature of the notes and obligations of the town to take actions to maintain the notes as tax-exempt obligations on behalf of the note owners. So basically, it shows that we are tax-exempt. We don't okay. have to pay taxes on the bonds. And there's four different copies there. Okay. And the next one is? Uh, the last one is the significant event certificate. And it's, a, you know, this is a basically dis a disclosure certificate that obligates the town to notify the market if certain events occur during the term of the note, such as defaults, rating changes, late payments, etc. And okay. which has never happened, cannot foresee anything like that happening. But it is okay. uh, something that needs to be. All right. Those are, that's what needs to be done. Yep, those yeah. are the five areas. All right. Are you going to be around for a minute or two? Mm -hmm. That might take you a little bit. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah, there, again, there's a lot that goes into borrowing the money. When I had a commitment at a conference two weeks ago, mm -hmm. uh, the assistant town account Marshall Broca and uh, Tom Calanto, the town account, the uh, very Excellent job working together uh, with me not not being here to fulfill all the bond requirements. Working with as, as I told Paul about the team effort okay. and um, brought all this together. All right, that's put in front of you tonight. All right. Well, we thank you for your efforts. Um, but certainly, I need to look at it and uh, give Mr. O'Gorman a chance to also. So we can, we'll certainly try to get that done because it's you know one of the hard things, but in the future. Next one. Next one. Next on our um, 714, which we, I think, believe we're a little bit late appointment, um, Ms. Uh, Serafino? Is it Serafino? It is. Okay, yeah. come on. <laughs> Hi, how are Hi. you? Thank you for coming in today. This is Andrew. Hi, how are you? Nice to meet you. Hi, how are you? Okay. Okay. Welcome. Thanks. And uh, what can we do for you today? Um. Well, we've been. I've been here. This is my husband, Andrew. Mm -hmm. Does the yep. camps okay. with me? Um, All right. We just flip our names around everything. Um, and then, guys, just wanted to, I guess, kind of keep you aware of the situation. We received an email this past week um, from somebody that went to the rec asking to sign up for our camp. Okay. Um, and they just emailed us following up, so I have an email for you. Basically, just wanted to keep you aware of the situation and hoping. Um, it kind of alarmed us, and we didn't know if it had happened more than once. Or, mm -hmm. But we were just hoping to, I guess, with you, possibly sit down with with them and kind of figure everything out once and for all. Okay. <laughs> Get everything out yeah. in the open because there's lots of issues. With that, so.
Okay. Um, may I ask a question? Yes, you may. The what is the cycle? What happens? How how do people sign up? Just so that I have it for your camp. Um. Well, we created a flyer, a flyer, and mm -hmm. sent it to got it approved by the superintendent and sent it to the schools. Okay. And it says that they have to sign up on the rec website, but then okay. I also put our emails for any questions. Okay. Um, but you have to go through the through the rec website um, onto the portal. Okay. And then find the page and then find the name of the camp and then register. Okay, so all the registrations are still going through the rec department? They are. I will okay. say that I've gotten a few saying, because the name of our camp that's on the flyer isn't mm. what has been put up on the website, so we've asked for it to be changed. Okay, and what was, can I inquire? What was the, we didn't get, there were two questions. They addressed my first question, but not the question about it being changed. So I kind of reached the point of just saying, fill out the registration form and bring mm -hmm. it to the first day of camp with your payment because it's just been very um, back and forth. So that's why we just wanted to kind of clear everything and just so we can get okay. taken care of. Okay. Uh, Selectman Gorman, any questions from you? I always go to my right and it's, it's, forgive me. <laughs> uh, no, I think we're going to have to look into this I think so more. too. Yeah. Nope. Yeah. Questions. Okay, so um, what we'll do is we'll set up um, a meeting um, rather quickly and uh, with uh, myself, the rec department, and you. Billy, are you going, you want to be active in this? Yes. Okay, so then it, uh, so um, it'll have to be a posted meeting. Uh, Paul? I, don't, I don't think we have oh. all three of us there just to go over this. So. I, I know. No, we don't. But I just want to give you the yep. offer I since it has it. to be a posted uh, meeting. Okay, um, let's set that meeting and then um, work on getting this corrected okay. because this has long-reaching ramifications. Mm -hmm. um, sure. I, I, it would only be a matter of babysitting, so. Okay, so it's, so. <laughs> we can arrange we'd it have to, we'd, Since easily. it's going to be posted, it would have to be a couple of days. Okay. Sure. Okay? It's fine, I'll find yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank, thank, you. thank you very much. I'm sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank appreciate you it. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, can we postpone items five and six, please? Any objections to that? No, you, mean, you get five Post and six. I got and five seven. and six. Okay. The latest one, I think it was six and seven. You talking about okay. the minutes? Yeah, the minutes. Yeah, yeah, that's fine with me. So we're tabling those? Oh, yeah, just for now. Oh, okay. I see. Okay, where was the new one? It was in front of me. Hmm. Try, try the one underneath there. Nope. <coughs> no. Aha! I see, said the blind man. Okay, so it would be six and seven that we're tabling. Yeah, yeah. Six for and now. Seven. Six and seven, yeah. For now. Okay, the number eight, the Fourth of July, Fourth of July orders and maps. Um, before you, you have um, the parade orders. Unit one position would be, um, excuse me, unit one position two is the board of selectmen. Who's position one? I believe we're behind the fire departments. Works for me. Okay. Um, is this for us just, we don't need to approve this. We're just looking at it, correct? Correct. Okay, so that's just a notification. Wow. Okay. You guys ready to walk? And I'm ready to ride. Have you decided what you're going to wear? It's not going to be scared. You can't wear a skirt. I thought we should wear skirts. My speedo. And Billy, no. You're gonna wear a speedo. No, no speedo, Billy. Oh, that's how stuff gets started. Okay. All right, fellas. Okay. Um, 
There's uh, the next is the Board of Selectmen scheduled uh, proposed scheduled uh, meetings for July and August. Actually, he goes through. Uh, Nick has provided us through the end of the year. Um, certainly, it's always subject to change, but that's what it is for now. Um, are there any conflicts that you know of right now? I don't have, I don't have any right now. Okay. All it's right actually then. strange. Usually we have a three meeting, either July or August, but normally it's ended up being a three meeting month, and we've always canceled mm -hmm. one, but we don't have the yeah. next three meeting month is September, so it worked out well for summertime purposes. Nice. Oh, you get the. Yeah. Interesting. Let me see those, babe. Now let me show you his. We got more meetings than meetings? Um, yours is more readable. Oh. It's interesting. It's so, I so we're working on it. Ah, <laughs> see, said the blind man. Um, okay, and the next is the uh, veterans um, picnic. Um, what has happened is uh, the regional uh, veteran has um, council. Is, there, is that the correct name for them, the veterans council? Uh, Veteran Service District. Okay, Veteran Service District. District has decided that they want to come to East La Meadow, which is really nice. And so we don't have a date yet, but it's going to be coming, and we'll make sure that we advertise it and everything. And so it'll be our regional. Everybody from our region will be coming here. So um, we're trying to work it out. It would be nice to host them for, for a change. It's been held in Hamden before, and I think that was it so far because it's a new thing. So. It'll be nice to host it, so um, it's nice to be appreciated. Um, town accountant position is uh, number 11. Nick? Uh, Madam Chairman, there's uh, possibly two aspects of this, and I would suggest that the, the um, board consider part of it in the executive session if the board's going to discuss possible uh, candidates uh, for interview as part of uh, screening committee activities <coughs> um, okay. but then if the board wanted to consider um, the, the first half of it if you will um, it could also be discussed in executive session under non-union negotiations strategy with respect to non-union negotiations council a council may not uh, have the benefit of this in front of him. This is under uh, selectman business. Do you wish I for me to? Uh, I, I would with like him? Yep. for him. You could give him. Yeah, I think he should know. Yeah. I could uh, give him just a brief uh, update. That would on be it. fantastic. Play some music. I almost said play that. One of those KC and the Sunshine Band tunes. Why don't you go ahead and go through the announcements? Um, I'll read really slow. Read real slow. <clears throat> the town offices are closed Friday, July 4th, 2014, in observance of Independence Day. The Board of Selectmen's meeting, Tuesday, the next Board of Selectmen's meeting is Tuesday, July 8th, 2014, 6 p.m., in the town hall hearing room. Okay. Hmm. Should we have a two minute recess? Uh, I think we might because it looks like it's going to take a minute. Um, but mm, I'll entertain a, a motion for a short recess. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Nope. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you. We're back in, in session. And we have our town council. Um, he's been updated on um, the proposal. And so, what would you think? Um, my understanding is that there is the possibility that the board may be entering into um, negotiations for a short term limited uh, contract for accounting services. And right. to that extent, um, that discussion of whether to entertain the proposal and what terms or conditions you might wish to offer, if that were going to also be considered, would be a proper subject for executive session for the purposes of non-union 
contract negotiations. Okay. Although the contract would be for a limited window, mm -hmm. it still would be a contract negotiation for which you. Okay. Would have to Is, let me ask you what's what's the difference between a contract and an agreement? Nothing. Nothing. Okay. All right. It's just trying to save some money here. Okay. All right then. So, so that'll be under um, executive session. While I have you here. Yes. We might as well. Sound like my wife now. <laughs> What else is uh, going to be under? Do you see anything else that would need to be under executive? Says it. I um, at this point, not, I don't know the specifics about items 32 and 30. Uh, 32 specifically, I don't know that. 33 and 34, I don't really have a lot of information about that. So I don't. I don't believe, based on what I know, none of the items under old business with town council would be executive session. Okay. Is there any information, Nick, that council needs to be advised of for item 32, 33, and 34? Let's look at that. Um, 32 would be um, any ongoing uh, matters that require updating. Just a list of candidates for, for the um, list, correct? Uh, right. Yeah. The the same same there's candidates, candidates, right? Yes. There would be no real discussion on that. It's a list of candidates that we have. Okay. Item uh, 33 to see if there's anything there um, regarding uh, potential litigation or any uh, settlements. I do have uh, um, litigation, uh, litigation matters to discuss to bring up the, up the board up to date with respect to the directive that I was given at the last meeting with respect to a pending a notice of claim. So okay. that would so be that executive. Okay, 34? I, I believe that is just the um, same uh, letter that we had received from Maya uh, back in uh, May mm -hmm. looking for uh, authority to, to move forward on a matter they were hearing. Okay, so that's just notification at that's this point. It's just a follow through. I don't think there's any, anything new on that, is it? That's how that went. No, and I've heard nothing either. more on that matter. Okay. All right, so. And the others would be session. Okay. Uh, uh, Madam Chair, was there yes. a discussion under um, that town accountant? Did uh, council? I don't know if I missed it. Was there discussion of, from council about uh, the other part of it, other than the negotiate uh, potential he, negotiations? He said that it would be under executive, um, under non-union contract negotiations. Okay. Th there was a part uh, two to that. The second part of that, I believe, uh, dealt with the, um, I'm advised, dealt with uh, responses to the request for candidates for the position mm -hmm. for uh, town accountant. And my suggestion would be that um, the board individually review the applications that you have from the uh, candidates that have responded to, to determine two things. One. Um, whether you're satisfied with the number of candidates that you have received res um, responses from, or applicants you receive responses from, and two, then whether individually you're comfortable with the quality of the resumes and the information that you have. If your answer to either or bo to both of those is yes, then the next step would be to establish a, a screening committee to review the candidates, uh, to make a recommendation to the to the board. Um, as to final candidates for consideration or to determine whether the board itself wanted to hold interviews um, and make the final determination itself. Uh, but I would suggest that that vote not be made until you've had the opportunity to review the candidates to see what the, your own feelings with respect to the worth of the candidates that you have. Okay. So we had originally had the timeline for July 8th to start interviews, is that correct? Or soon thereafter? Uh, soon thereafter, the only the deadline I tr remember off the top of my head is mm -hmm. the June 23rd deadline for people to submit okay. applications. Okay. Uh, All right. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, so now I'm uh, going on. Oh, do we? Okay. With regards to what uh, Attorney Donahue has said, 
are we all in agreement that we're going to review them and then come back mm -hmm. and look yeah. at that on our eve? Okay. All right. So we don't need to vote on that. Um, the next thing is the um, boards and commissions reappointments, new appointments. Um, there's one that's pressing. Um, I would like to have the others, an opportunity to review the others if we could. The one that's pressing is with regards to the uh, community, is it community preservation? No, community preservation one. Um, Mr. Kingston is resigning and he's making the recommendation of uh, Thomas O'Brien and Mr. Kingston would um, would would um, in, hmm. in entertain us um, appointing him as citizen at large to fill the vacancy of uh, Thomas O'Brien so there's like a switch <coughs> so I'll entertain a motion to accept that that one so is it both of them? yeah both of those so moved second okay is there any further discussion no. okay so that's taken care of all in favor favor aye, aye. aye. And if we could look at the others um, at our next meeting, that would be greatly appreciated. What happens also um, is my understanding that just because if we don't go through with the appointments today, um, all will stay as it is. And so, my question. okay, <laughs> I will stay as it is, um, and then we can take this up on July 8th. All right, so the next um, item on our on our um, agenda is uh, towing contracts. Uh, Nick? Uh, this is um, a carryover item for the board to consider uh, which companies that it wishes to award the towing contracts for FY15. Okay. Um, Selectman Federici, is there any converse, any uh, discussion that you'd like to have? Not right now. Not right now? Any discussion you'd like to have? Well, I, we have two right now. We have two right now, yes. But and so there there's, there's we can a, always have a third. Yeah, yeah, there's a third one in East Lawn Meadow, and they're from East Lawn Meadow. Mm -hmm. And I think it should be a rotating thing. If it's working with two, it'll work with three. Mm -hmm. And one of them's in East Lawn Meadow. Okay. And I, I think we should consider the one in East Long Meadow also. I heard you breathing. Okay. That's a good thing yes. when I'm stopping. Yeah, go ahead. Um, so I'm to no, I was just curious. As far as the one in East Long Meadow, and I believe the gentleman's here. How many trucks do you have, if I may ask? I have two that I could use. Okay. Because that was one of the concerns, because I had heard you had one, and obviously if you have an accident with more than one car, then... Mm -hmm. yeah. I have two trucks that are, that are available to you. To tow four cars at one time. If I may say just one, one moment, since the gentleman is speaking, mm -hmm. do we have him identify which company he's representing? Yeah, come right on. Up. Why don't you or come on up? Well, we should. Uh, oh, well, I know. Then we have. Wait, wait. Stay right there. I'm sorry. <laughs> if we invite him up, do we? Ha does that mean that are we setting a precedent where we have to invite the remainders of the um, candidates up? It's really in the discretion of the board who and what towing companies you decide to appoint. Um, mm -hmm. So <clears throat> any information that you want to obtain um, is fine. I, I would submit, though, if you're going to ask specific questions of individual candidates to level the playing field, that at least the other candidates be notified that the board may wish to ask questions in making their decisions. <coughs> But, but to the not, board, this is the third time that this gentleman has been here. The third time. Well, what council is saying, well, I council can say exactly what he's saying, um, is that if we're going to allow someone else to speak and we're going to ask specific questions, then we should, uh, but I think, if I may, uh, sir, the questions that are to him are specific to his company. That's fine, and you could notify the other uh, entities that if they wish to uh, respond to the questions that were asked, okay, they're, they're free to do so. All right. So with that said, yes, I will entertain you coming up, sir. 
just to know we do have another one of the carriers. We do have bag. another carrier. Great. Yeah. Hi. Hey, Thank you. So the question was, Mr. Fed, uh, identify yourself, please. My name is Andrew Bordoni. Okay. And I own to uh, Pride Towing. Pride Towing. Okay. And I can give a little background about myself and my company. And uh, so I'm, I'm here. I live in East Long Meadow. I've been here pretty much my whole life. My whole family's here in East Long Meadow. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a Marine Corps and combat <coughs> veteran. Mm -hmm. When I came out of the Marine Corps, I started a towing company here mm -hmm. in East Long Meadow. Mm -hmm. So I have a towing company that's in East Long Meadow. The, the yard that I'm going to be storing vehicles at is also here in East Long Meadow. Mm -hmm. And I never had any discrepancies in any towing that I've ever had, that I've ever done for any mm -hmm. services. And I put myself through a towing and recovery course mm -hmm. so I can do things properly, effectively, and safely. Mm -hmm. And I just would just like to say I'd like to be appreciate. I would appreciate it if, if I could get on rotation for a week for a town of East Long Meadow. And if you guys were able to give me the opportunity to get on the rotation, I would greatly appreciate it. Okay, you had some specific uh, questions. Uh, just to repeat them okay. for... Yeah, the, actually I do have two now. <coughs> Obviously you answered the first question as far as the number of trucks. Mm -hmm. And where is your storage yard in East Long Meadow? Uh, 347 Elm Street, East Long Meadow. And is that a business? It is. And what's the name of the business? Uh, Body Works Unlimited. Um, can I ask specifically how many cars you could ask, actually hold there? I can haul four cars at once with the two trucks. No, did, but how many? Yeah. Yeah. May, may each, each truck carries two cars. That wasn't my question. Oh. I'm so, I apologize. Let me um, clarify. How many cars can you actually store there at 347 Elm Street? It's between 50 and 60. Between 50 and with, 60? With inside and outside. Uh, Selectman Gorman, any further questions? No, no, other than, you know, I'm happy there's someone from East Long Meadow that uh, mm -hmm. is taking an interest, you know, in doing work out here. Okay. And I thank you for coming forward. Yeah, thank you. Um, Selectman Federici. Okay, and who is the other gentleman who does... Thank you You're very welcome. much. The other gentleman, please. Because well, we Money, believe in being minutes. fair. Ronnie Masco. Hi, Ronnie Masco. Masco. Um, what company are you with? Mascaro Stolen. Oh, Mascaro. Okay. I've been employed, employed by the town for the last okay. seven years. And there's been no complaints as far as I know of, according to the chief. Mm -hmm. um, my one question is, I'm sure. not disputing Andrew, but I believe he's using his own truck and another company's truck which is family, I understand, but it's not his. It's not his business. Uh, so it's his own truck and... One of the trucks is his, which is fine. Yep. The other one is not his. It'd be like me. I'm adequately supplied. I have eight vehicles, more than enough. Okay. Both four-wheel drive and heavy if I need them without any problems. There hasn't been anything in the last seven years that I haven't been able to handle. The mm -hmm. town's called me from heavy down to four-wheel drives, burnt vehicles in the woods. Mm -hmm. I don't believe he has a four-wheel drive vehicle. I'm not disputing man. Andrew's mm -hmm. a good kid, but mm -hmm. his vehicles are not both his. So if he weren't able to do it, he'd have then to call somebody else. But, but now he's putting himself into a predicament of he's not qualified to do the job. Okay. Uh, council, since something has been alleged, someone hasn't done their homework on that part of it. That's all I'm saying. The other individual is here. Mm -hmm. and if he can respond to it in a succinct fashion, I think it would make sense rather than to just have an allegation okay. without any response. Okay, so we're going to allow him to respond to what you okay. said. Do, would you like to, but fellas, we're not going to get no, there's no going problem. to, okay, I, I'm just, I'm just saying, I'm, I'm, I just, okay, you, come on, okay, all right, all right. <laughs>
we worked well together in the past. Oh, okay, okay. I don't have any problems. Okay, great. Right, Andrew? Absolutely. All right, that's what I'm talking about. Um, the only okay. thing I wanted to say was about, like, say, for instance, I get into a procurement that I couldn't do, like he said he has a four-wheel drive vehicle or something mm -hmm. like that. Now, if for some reason, I, I'm sure a lot of things, a lot of that doesn't happen a lot, but if mm -hmm. it were to happen and I needed assistance, mm -hmm. why couldn't I talk, uh, call on another towing company to help me out? I don't see why that would be a problem. Another towing company that's already on the list? Exactly. Or another like, like, like Ronnie, if, if, I, if I have something that I needed assistance on or something, why I don't see why it would be a problem if I could call him up and say, hey, I got this that's going on. If you could mm -hmm. come down and send your truck, one of your trucks down here to give me assistance. Any response? No, I don't think there's a problem with that at all. Because I know other towing companies that do that. I'm going to go to Slackman Federici and then I'll come, or I can stake my case too. Eat whatever you like. Okay. The only thing that I would think as, as a consumer, if there's a delay in service, mm -hmm. um, that would cause more time to get the service to the person who is having the issue. That would be what my concern would be. Outside so so as out. soon as somebody calls you, mm -hmm. you would call them immediately, or are you going out to the site and looking at it and saying, oh, this is too much for me? Well, say, for instance, you were to give me, you were dispatch me the call, mm -hmm. and you would describe me the scenario, mm -hmm. and I would instantly know whether I would need assistance with that call or not. 90% of the time, I wouldn't need assistance, but if I did, I would just call, say, Ronnie, as soon as I got that dispatched call, he would send one of his trucks as I send my truck, so we'd get there at the same time. So there, uh, virtually there wouldn't really be a delay time. That brings up other questions for me. So I can Federich? Um, my only question or comment, if you will, is is the whole idea of getting the, the, the con giving the contract out to a towing company is that they're able to provide full service. And if mm -hmm. in fact this is the case where you would have to farm out, then then you know um, nothing against the company. But if you've got to call him for a tow like that, then if we had them on to begin with, then we wouldn't have to worry about that. That's that's my only thought. I do have one thing I could say about that. I know 90% of the time, I don't think that you would really need assistance for the tow. Okay. But I know for in the past, you know, I've helped out other companies that would that needed assistance also. Okay. And it wouldn't happen all the time, obviously. It would just be one of those things. But, but I'd like to say something. Just what, one minute. I promise I'll come right to you. It'll be less than a minute. How often do you have to use four-wheel drives? Whenever there's a burnt car, middle of winter, you tell me. No, I'm asking you. For, I'm asking for data any, from you. Oh, for data. Uh, probably last year. Last year. Fifteen times. Fifteen Two times or three out burnt, of? Out of maybe 150, 160 calls. Okay. 10%. To East Long Meadow? All East Long Meadow, only. 150 yes. calls? Okay, that's another question. Okay, sure, select one. Well, when I worked for the phone company, we had a line truck tipped over and a company mm -hmm. sent out a vehicle, which they found out was too small to tip the truck back up and they had to call other companies to assist them. Okay. So it doesn't happen that often, but uh, when it happens, I don't know too many towing companies that have four-wheel drive. Okay. To, Quite a few of them do that. Though. Quite a few of them. Though. I don't know okay. too many. You get a burnt car in the middle of the woods. How are you going to get it? No. How often is that? Okay. How often? I had three last year. You can check with the fire department. Yeah. Okay. We've gotten. Is there anything else you'd like to add? Um, I pretty or much you? said everything. Okay. Anything you like to add? Yeah. Okay. Um, to my board, is there any more information that we'd like to collect on this matter? The only thing I'm thinking is since we've, and I'll do this through council, since mm -hmm. we've talked to, to, to these candidates, exactly. so we give the other, the other we, ones an we opportunity. We need to send out. You know, now that we've asked questions of CJ, excuse me, but CJ's is the only other one, and there's no right. problem with any of our issues here, whether it be a heavy well, truck, four wheel drive, they have four wheel drives also. Okay, I appreciate what you said, but the thing is, and in, in what's the Fair process, and, and since we have opened it up to them, to you, they may choose not to, to have anything to say, but we do need to afford them the ability to say it since we have listened to you. So I appreciate what you have you know, coming today, and um, we wanted to hear what you had to say. And so yeah, now. I got one more question. Okay, you can where, ask where your question. You, about your cars, you told them to Springfield? Yeah. The 
the board has all the information. Everything's a legit storage facility, up to 40 cars, no problem. Hmm. Inside okay. and outside as well. Okay, we're done with this. Um, My we question is, the contract supposed to be awarded for the 8th. Are we going to meet again before this? Make sure we meet on the 8th. You meet on the 8th. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No problem. Okay, we're all done. Thank you. Okay. Sorry. Yep. Thank you. Madam Chairman. Yes. A uh, question uh, for the board. Uh, would the board want to um, consider uh, allowing for the contract to be extended to July 9th to cover the 8th so that there's no ambiguity? Um, how does the board feel? On that. What do you want to do, Nick? To, cha to change it to the <coughs> ninth. To the ninth. Uh, the, yeah, yeah. To extend the contract one extra day, so that uh, yeah, when no, we're meeting no. on the eighth. So, uh, Mr. so you're not you're not towing cars with your dump truck on the eighth. We're going to get. Mr. Federici, yes. how do, select my Federici, how do you feel about that? That's fine. Okay, I'll entertain a motion to extend the contract until the ninth, um, pending our. Um, our resolution on uh, our meeting on July 8th. So moved. And second. 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 Any s discussion? No. Nope. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Um, in light of the um, additional information that we received today, um, item 14 will be carried over. Um, item 15. Um, because of item 14 being carried over, item 15, I would uh, make a motion to continue with the recreation temporary help. So moved. Is there a second? Second. second. Any further discussion? No. Nope. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, cable franchise renewal report um, on the hearing. On the 19th, we had a hearing that was well attended by 32 people. Uh, there were several um, issues that did come out of it. Um, I felt like um, LCAT did tape it. Uh, Mr. Cohen was uh, very um, receptive and received quite a few questions and a little hot seat. Um, we, ha we have uh, more information that we need to go into because of some of the questions that did arise uh, during that uh, conversation, let me call it that. Is there something else you would like to add to that, Nick, you were there? Well, I, I think um, it was a well-run meeting, and uh, I think uh, you allowed, uh, running the meeting, I think you allowed for people to uh, be able to have their say, and uh, I, I think Mr. Cohen on the hot seat did a pretty fine job. <laughs> See, I didn't call it a hot seat, but it was certainly it was certainly warm. Um, we, and um, the only other thing I would add is what we were, uh, the committee was promoting that evening is that there will be another hearing uh, in September. Yep, on September 18th is one in the evening, and um, there looks to be that there will be one in the daytime time to be announced. And um, Mr. Cohen, Cohen, who is the um, our charter cable um, representative, will be there at the one in the daytime again. So, if you have an opportunity to be there, you can ask your questions about the cable that we have and things that are changing and just fun stuff. Fun stuff. Um, the proposal. That form three three ninety four. If you had a chance to look it over, I I certainly have questions. Um, I, I guess we need to go into the fact that there is a proposal of who's buying a uh, Comcast is purchasing Time Warner. Time Warner, and if that is approved, then we will no longer have Charter Cable. We will then have Comcast Cable. 
So that's why it's important that you attend one of these hearings. Um, some people are yes and some people are like no. So um, we're in <coughs> negotiations and we're truly negotiating um, this, this time around and there are a lot of variables. But um, Nick, if you want to talk about that Form 394, the re restructuring proposal. Sure. Um, just in, in brief, board, uh, to the board, this was a notice sent from Comcast uh, to the board as the issuing authority that this deal with Time Warner, uh, with Comcast purchase of Time Warner is pending. And uh, the, in summary, what this is, Form 394, it's a a notification to the board about the deal and also to let the board know that during this interim period before the deal is uh, <coughs> executed that uh, Comcast will own charter communications as a wholly owned indirect subsidiary I believe it's the term they use. <coughs> what they're asking the board is does the board first believe that it has the authority to consent to that arrangement in the interim and if the board uh, doesn't think that it has uh, that consent or if the board is indifferent to that consent, then there is a uh, resolution that the company is asking for the board to uh, sign and send back to them. If the board believes that it needs to give, its, it has that authority to give consent and that it wants to consider whether or not to give that consent, it has 120 days uh, from the receipt of the letter, so probably about 110 days or something mm -hmm. like that at this point, um, to uh, consider that matter and provide the document back <coughs> or not uh, to Comcast. And, and beyond that, what the uh, ramifications are if the board doesn't uh, uh, offer that consent within the 120 days, I, I really haven't had an opportunity to dig into that or speak yeah. with counsel. Um, certainly, uh, we would want counsel to uh, look over that um, that document because it certainly has a lot of twists and turns in it, and I'm not sure if we are even the ones that would be making that recommendation. Um, it's it's yeah. Are there any information on that at this point to give you an answer to that? Okay. So what we'll do is we'll we'll table that until council has an opportunity to look at it. Nick, can you make sure that uh, council gets those documents? Um, I know it's been tabled, but did you have a chance to look at it? Did, is there anything you wanted to add to that, no, sir? Or do you no. want to? Okay. And okay, all right. So we'll table that until and we'll come back to it at another time. We have 110 days. 110. We'll, it's about 110. Yeah. Yes. Um, perhaps this would be an opportunity to bring up an LCAP meeting, um, or do you want to table that? We do need to set an LCAP meeting, um, but let me get with um, Mr. Mackey and make sure that that's uh, uh, that that we're setting it where he gets an opportunity. That'll be within the last in the within the next uh, week and a half that we'll do that, and we'll make sure that it's posted as we normally do. Do you have a date in mind? Well, I, I think we, we just had a very preliminary discussion about mm -hmm. a, a date, um, but one, one conversation I... And you say we? Uh, you and I this okay. afternoon. Okay, just making afternoon. sure it was the right yes. one. Okay. Um, with regards to that, we did discuss a tentative date, um, but I have, in between uh, that conversation and tonight's meeting, I spoke with uh, Mr. Mackey just saying, you know, we're looking to... Right. We had that discussion. Sure. Uh, one of the things is there, and, and I didn't mention during our conversation, is that um, at this at this time, Mr. Selectman Gorman is the liaison for LCAP. So okay. I um, just wanted to bring that to everyone's attention so that mm -hmm. he isn't is he's hearing the opportunity now about a meeting. So I would mm -hmm. need to uh, bring Ms. Uh, Selectman Gorman into dates and times and so forth for a meeting. So what date did you have in mind? Well, I think uh, you had brought up uh, looking at next Tuesday, the 1st at 10 o'clock. Does that work for you, Selectman Gorman? Tuesday at 10? Mm-hmm. I think that's uh, July 1st. Yeah. I think okay. I, I, I think at I 10? Can. Okay, so then that's it. What date would that be? Uh, July 1st. And it's not confirmed yet, but it may be at the LCAT studio. 
where would that be? Nick? At the LCAT. At the L, yeah. T tentatively at the LCAT. Okay. Yep. All right. All right, then next. The please interviews, questions to be asked. Madam Chairman, this is here because the board, it's anticipated, will be interviewing police candidates at the July 8th meeting. And the question is to the board, uh, what is the procedure going to be to determine what questions will be asked and the order to uh, ask them? But we've decided that um, the questions won't be at the July 8th. Oh, I'm sorry. I apologize. My error. Okay, so do we want to form our own questions? Or do we want to go with what's recommended? And uh, I'd, I'd like to uh, form our own questions. Okay. Okay. I, I, if we get, and if we get them recommended from the police department or from whoever, um, they know better what to ask about the position than I do for the most part. So I'd rather have them. Okay. So you know, combo. Yeah. All right. So you're gonna do your own, and, or you want to look at you want to look at see what he's yeah, gonna like present, to look, yeah. and then yeah. have the opportunity to. Create Just your own if you like. Yeah. Okay. That sounds right. good. Uh, um, Madam Chairman, that's going to be a January till. No, July. 8th. I mean July. 8th. Mm -hmm. The uh, question I have then is, for practical purposes, will the questions be coming in such uh, that would the board want me to put up a questionnaire sheet so that everybody's asking them again in the same order? And how are the f uh, final determinations about what is going to be asked to I be I guess made? it would have to be determined prior, um, right before the meeting. Um, if you can get those out to us and within the next couple of days, and people will give you back the feedback of which ones they want to ask, if they want to ask those, or get, and or give you their um, questions that are developed. So we'll know by, we'll, and then have them all printed up, and then when you come to the meeting, we'll all decide which ones we're going to ask. With preference of the person who creates a question, they should have the opportunity to ask that question. Number 18, I'm going to table that until we can get further investigations with regards to that. Number 19 is a request for the Masonic Temple one day license, beer and wine for Saturday, July 5th and Saturday, July 12th from 6 p.m. to 12 p.m. They're also asking for an entertainment license on the same date and times at the Masonic Hall at 43 Chestnut Street in conjunction with a birthday party. Insurance is on file. I'll entertain that motion. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Any further discussion? Moved. All in favor? Aye. Aye. There's also a request for a block party on Redden Drive, blocking off portion of Redden Drive, house number two to house number eight, and all of Redden Lane on Saturday, June 28th, um, from 3 p.m. to 8 p.m. Uh, recommendations have been made by the fire, uh, p fire police and DPW. I'll entertain a motion to accept those uh, recommendations um, as, a well, as well as allowing the block party. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any further? Any discussion? Yes, one question. Sure. Does that include Bobby Adams's house? I don't know where Bobby Adams lives. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Just seeing if you're awake back there. I'm awake. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> it's been moved and seconded. All. In, is there any further discussion? No. Nope. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, next is um, there's a request from our congressman, uh, Richard Neal, uh, to, for artwork from East Long Meadow. When, when's, when does he exactly need that again? There, there's no. Oh, excuse me. Excuse me. Sorry. Go ahead, man. Um, it, it says no hurry on this letter. Right. But is there, do you have a feel for a date? There's no Russia team this artwork. Right. Um, but I'm asking Nick if he has a feel for a date. The, there is no rush. There is no uh, urgent urgency to it. Okay. I do not have a feel for a date. Okay. So if anybody has any artwork that represents East Lawn Meadow, um, notify um, one of your selectmen or uh, Mr. Bro 
and we'll try to make sure that we get something to our uh, congressman that represents East Long Meadow. Okay, moving on. Um, there's an invitation from the chi fire chief for the graduation exercise for uh, Chris Beecher on Friday. Ju that should have went in announcements on July 18th. Uh, at 1.30, and that's at the Mass Firefighter Academy, 1 State Street in Stowell, Mass. Um, I'd like to attend. Any, anybody else want to go? July also? 18th, 1.30? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Can you check your calendars? And maybe we can all write up together. Where, where would that be? In Stowell, Mass. Stowell, Mass? Mm -hmm. Stowell, Mass. How, how far is Stowell? That's a, it's uh, hour, about an hour. About an hour? It's about an hour, hour, it's about an hour yeah. away. I think it's a little... Okay, so may, you know, just mark your calendars, and maybe we can all just get together and go for that. Madam Chairman, will the uh, if I could ask, will the board then RSVP directly to the chief? Um, you can RSVP for me right now, um, and uh, Selectman Federici will check and get back to you, Nick. And what yeah. do you want to? You gonna go? Yeah, I'll go. Okay, so and um, Selectman Gorman's going. So we, we all may be going uh, um, with regards to that. Okay, you're up. Uh, uh, we got uh, for approval for food service permits for the JC Carnival. Mm -hmm. uh, the application was approved by Lori McCool, our health agent. Uh, I'll skip down to 21. Um, the food server permit, we have to vote on this. You just Can you entertain a motion to okay. approve the food permit. Okay. Yeah, uh, want to take a motion? Mm -hmm. a you entertain a motion entertain to a motion. approve the um, food per, uh, service permit. The food service permit for, the for JC's. JC Carnival. Uh, so moved. Second. Any, Any discussion? No. Nope. All in favor? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, so that passes. You're all set. Okay, and the next one is with regards to. Okay, the next one's for the health agent. Okay. Um, we got a little problem keeping health agents in East Long Meadow. And the health agent we have right now, Lori McCool, her last day, I believe, is the third, Nick. That's what she said. So we're going to have to entertain advertising for another health agent mm -hmm. and the reason I get from the last two or three that we've had is because the pay is not enough and the hours aren't enough and they can't make a living off what we're paying them so I came up with a proposal for the health agent uh, for a 19 hour work week which it's now 10 and twenty and twenty two dollars an hour, which is mediocre in between what we were paying. And uh, Nick was going to find out if we could afford that. Which did you, Nick? I uh, provided the board with a memo uh, that includes. The short answer is yes. Um, I've provided the board with a memo that I think um, gives some detail to base a decision on. Uh, based on those numbers, the only thing I didn't include with when I did the calculations for yours, your proposal at 22 was I didn't remember if you had had something in there for mileage, so I didn't put that in there. But there's another calculation uh, that does have mileage in there for what it was for Mr. Kowal. So based on that amount or less um, or more, you get a bit, you could figure it out. For the last two, through the chair. For the last two um, agents, um, have we provided mileage? Provi no. No. No mileage. Okay. No benefits. Mm-hmm. And um, the, the salary for Mr. Cole, you know, this is about the same. For the certifications these people need, you know, what we're paying them just isn't hitting it because 22 years ago, like one lady explained, she was uh, getting paid $15 an hour going for her certifications. Now they got their certification and most of them want to get paid between 25 and 30. I figure 22 is a mediocre price where we probably could keep someone in East Long Meadow. 
because we have many services, uh, you know, stop and shops, uh, all these food vendors. Um, we got the the Fourth of July thing here. I mean, we need someone permanent here that can that we can depend on because right now it's hit or miss. Okay. And um, just this past weekend, we had a fire over at the Starbucks. Mm -hmm. And they had to call me to go down there because they couldn't get a hold of the lady. Mm -hmm. So me and the fire chief went down there. Mm -hmm. and we had to close it down temporarily. Mm -hmm. So, but we we definitely need someone here permanent, and we got to make it so they can at least make some type of living. Okay. And that that is with no mileage and no benefits. Okay, so you're going from ten hours to nineteen hours. Right. Is it possible that you could start off with 15 hours with an increase of the of the pay and see how it goes? Because uh, we had keep in mind we had somebody there that was doing it for 10 hours at $15 an hour, and I understand what you're saying. But that was uh, how long? How many? How many uh, health agents ago? Three? No, two. Mr. Cole, right? No, this is this is Amy Protowski. Yeah, but she left us. Yeah. For another job because she said the money wasn't enough. I have a letter from her. Yeah, that's but this a, is supposed to be a part-time position. Yeah, and I know, that's, but that's how it was designed. But 19 hours a week is still a part-time position. 19 hours a week would kick you into possibly having to make it a union position as well when it's been covered in 10 hours. Is our health agent Union? They're not union, huh? No. Because they're 10 hours. No, I thought we had to keep it under 20, huh, Nick? No, it's 19. Nick? The health, the health agent is not a recognized position with the, within the union, within the town employees union. Well, all I can say is I, I think the board's putting me in position mm -hmm. because I'm the liaison and we're in deep trouble right now because we're not doing what we're supposed to do with the health agent. Mm -hmm. We're supposed to be inspecting schools every two years with these uh, eating establishments every two years and we haven't done this. We could be in trouble if we don't get moving on some of this stuff. So we got to come up with a decision tonight. So you're saying with, with the former health agent that the inspections weren't being done? The inspections haven't been done since Mr. Cole. In, in any of the establishments. I'm not sure if that's the fact. I'm positive. So we get we got to make a decision tonight on what we're going to do. I can meet you halfway with 15 hours. Um, and then the increase of 22 hours, well, and then yeah, to, but the to thing come back and visit. The thing is, Angela, I can't keep going through this. I, I shouldn't have to be going out on these. I'm only the liaison. Right. Those people got the credentials to go out. Right. To, to learn what to do. We mm -hmm. can't keep people. We can't even get them to come sometimes. They're hours. First we started in the morning, they were coming. Now they can't come in the morning. Now they can mm -hmm. only come in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. And now we can barely get them in the afternoon to come. It's just not en there's not enough hours, not enough money for these people. I mean, I go out with them, I see what they have to do, mm -hmm. and then I leave and I stare in here doing paperwork for two, three hours after. It's it's just totally impossible what the town East Long Meadows offer them. All these other towns are keeping them because, like, the town of say uh, Hamden, mm -hmm. they get they, they do the the uh, Title Fives. Mm -hmm. They're making more money than here because they give them eighty percent of the Title Fives there. Mm -hmm. We don't we don't have hardly any Title Fives there to speak of. I don't because think we, we have Very any, few. Yeah. So, I mean, we got to do something different than what they're doing to offer them money to stay here. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Okay, so you know, do we're, you, we're in a different so, position. So do now. you think that it's going to take 19 hours every week to, to meet our needs? When I just don't see the big difference between the 10 hours every week and there were some times when there was nothing to do and there was a stipend that was actually given every week and there were some times there was well, nothing to do. Well, the only reason, Angela, there's nothing to do is because 
they weren't doing what they're supposed to be doing because they didn't have the time because they had to go back to the, the town they came from or the ones they're responsible for. I mean, because one lady was serving three towns and East Long Meadow was strictly a fill-in. Yeah, that was a temporary. Yeah. I'm talking about the only person that I would be able to go back to is Amy Protowski. So she was doing the position and she got uh, rave uh, reviews from... Yeah, I, I don't know what... Amy, I wasn't here then, so mm -hmm. I, I can only speak of what's going on right now, you know. Mm -hmm. And I, I got to tell And so you, I guess what I'm asking is, what do you have that will, that justifies going from a 10-hour position to a 19-hour position? Doing the job the way we're supposed to and going to these schools, going to these business, these eating establishments and doing what we're supposed to because I have people tell me some of these eating establishments are horrendous. Mm -hmm. And, I, and I, you go in there and they haven't been uh, looked into in a couple of years. Okay, so they're how supposed to be, be looking them every two years, mm -hmm. they're supposed to be going around. And you know, in East Long Meadow, we have a lot of eating establishments compared to a lot of other, mm -hmm. other towns, you know? Mm -hmm. But you know, you get an epidemic where you, know, you get bad meat and people get sicker mm -hmm. at the yeah, carnival absolutely. and you get a okay. ration. Yeah. I remember at the carnival one time we had a problem there and you know, I don't want to be the liaison for it, not doing my job because we couldn't get a health agent in there, you know? Mm -hmm. So we, we got to do something tonight. We got to come up with some, a vote tonight on what we're going to do. Whatever you guys prefer, you know? What do you think, Paul? It's, um, um, obviously, we're in a tough situation. Uh, we, mm -hmm. had a, we really had a made when Fred was here. And I was just trying to ask Nick how many hours Fred worked, and he said whatever it took so that we don't really have a, a definitive uh, figure. But I'd hate to see, like, when's she going to leaving the third? Third. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so if we wait till the next meeting, then we're going to be, we may mm -hmm. be stuck with, you know, if we have Nobody. if we have issues or we have, you know, something going on, especially considering the carnival runs till the third. Mm -hmm. um, I noticed when, in Nick's Nick's review here that there's actually money in the in the budget. It looks like if I read this right, um, there was a surplus. So even with the increase in salary, there's still a surplus. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm not I'm not opposed to it. Mm -hmm. I guess is what I'm saying. Um, so at least we know we have the coverage. And um, does it have to go to 19 hours? Yeah, so that's the thing. Is, is my question. I, I think we could at least inc increase to 15 and see how it goes. And then if we have to increase it to 19 hours, we don't have any documentation as to exactly how many hours it would really take to uh, do this position, which is supposed to be a ten if it needs to be. Um, a full-time or increased hour position and it's documented and it's proven, I'm all for it, but I just <coughs> don't want to do it just because. But I certainly agree with you that, yes, uh, raising the um, salary would, would bring a better bu um, bunch for you. So we're talking about four hours here um, for 15 hours at the $22. And then you could go ahead and... Um, make your um well if someone th this is my proposal here if someone l wants to do something different make a proposal that's all okay um well okay so you you okay i would make a motion um i would ask for a motion of 15 hours a week um at 22 dollars an hour um with the um provision that we can revisit it to see if that's enough hours for that position. And you're going to advertise it at that? Yeah, you'd have to, yeah. So it needs to be seconded, I guess. Uh, we, who made the motion? I, I made the motion to... That's my motion. Are you accepting that motion? No, I'm not. Okay, you're not. Okay, right. so then we can't move it. Then we're back, right back where we started. I could move it. It's just you. Okay. Um, I'm trying to think of a way. Well, I'll move it, and then we have discussion. Okay. So, so move. It's moved. Okay, and then. So I guess I'm seconding it. That doesn't make any the, sense. You made the motion. I, I the made the motion. Made okay. The motion, right? so okay. I. I okay, second it. All right. 
So now discussion. Um, if I may, through the through the chair, I think what we should do is is not. I mean, I get, I'm thinking of a couple things here. We obviously with the 19 hours, we may get a better candidate because they're going to be making more money and they might be more willing. If we start with a 15, we will, we'll probably want to set from from day one figure out what this person's doing you know obviously keep, get, have a log of what they're doing because if we realize in short order that the 19 hours is actually going to be just barely enough you know you we may or the realize 15 hours is what we're yeah about, then yeah. then we can we can plan accordingly you know i just don't want to see it do the 15 and then stretch it out for a long time and still not be able to get the job done so mm -hmm. if we could set a short period of time to to basically shadow the position and see you know see what's actually uh <laughs> what it takes to do the job correctly because up mm -hmm. till now for the last couple of years since right. Fred left we've been we've been doing like this catch as catch can right. thing so we're, exactly. we're like we're plugging leaks instead of instead of you know, yeah putting band-aids on instead, yeah instead, instead of, of correcting problems correcting, correcting right. things before they leak so um that's my only concern is that you know what i'm trying to do paul is draw someone in that wants to stay here yeah. because right now nobody wants to stay here yeah. everybody's getting something else because they know yeah. they can't live there and that may be something to explain to them is if you get the candidates and if you say if you interview them say we're starting this as a 15 hour position but we we're, we know that it may be uh, we can go up to 19 hours which is sort of a sometimes you say that to people and they'll deliberately drag their feet to get the 19 hours mm -hmm. but hopefully if you have a good sense of who the person is you know, explain to them that we're trying to get this job done we're trying to get it done as reasonably as we can cost wise but we know to get somebody good, we have to go out there and, yeah. and uh, you know pay the money. And, and yeah. in theory, we don't know how many hours it's going to take to do the job correctly. Yeah, and through the chair, um, if the logs, the logs should be a great indicator as to what really needs to be done. And we're already shadowing them out there anyway, so that would just be more information. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So make your motion. I did. <laughs> so now you move to have a vote. So yeah. all in favor? Yeah, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, so that passes. So. Um, the other question I want to ask you, where are we going to advertise this? Because we're going to have to jump on this mm -hmm. because she's leaving the third. Uh, through the chair, I would suggest that you go through the reminder and the uh, Republican and as well as letting um, the Board of Health Charlie, uh, I can't think of his last name. Charlie Kanicki, let him know, and because he has um, connections all okay. over the state, right. and have it sent out that way as well. How soon could we get that out, Nick? An ad could be placed in the Republican probably um, Thursday or Friday. Right. Um, an ad for the reminder, unfortunately, wouldn't be in there until the following Thursday. Mm -hmm. um, I would want to know. I'm assuming that the board wants to have the deadline probably July 7th. Uh, July 7th? Well, you Which next meet on the 8th. Yeah. And Lori will be gone on the 3rd, so. Yeah. Unless we call a meeting. That's going to be tougher on the 4th. It is on the 4th. Yeah, yeah. That's if what I, I said. If I made through the chair, if Ben mm -hmm. was nice enough to write a, write a story about this, it would save us the advertising cost and people <laughs> would know right now. <laughs> He, he gave, Not to put he you gave, on the spot, he gave the, I was just si teasing the silent nod, yeah. <laughs> See, the, the Paul's point, though, Nick, you know, the, it's going to be tough for the July weekend, you know. Um, understood. Um, Mr. Chairman, I, I'm looking for direction from the board. The thing is, um, if the board wants to take a little bit more time to do it and then consider also uh, how you want to go about the interview process, that you know th certainly the board could do that uh, then your next meeting is July 22nd could, so could we could we hold, hold a special meet for that just for that we might the only thing that through the chair I'm sorry through, uh, the only thing that bothers me is that from the 3rd to the 22nd that time frame where if we're I don't know if another town would help cover you know if they've got somebody who that's something maybe to find out is if we knew that another town's health agent might cover for two weeks for us just to you know because we're in a bind then that would sort of alleviate the pressure but if not then we're going to be sitting here with 20 you know yeah. 19 days with nobody uh, See, the, the bad thing with that Paul we ask other people to help us and they tell us to bomb there I, I just can't take any more I mean yeah. that's what happened with this last lady here you know yeah I mean she, she was more than willing to help us but now she's it's just beyond her do you think that it would change because of the increase in the amount of money? 
Yeah, I know. You think it would change to the positive? Yes, I That do. she would do it? Oh, not her. Not her, but no. somebody else. Yes, <laughs> I, I, okay. I do, Angela. Okay. You know? So so maybe you won't have, maybe you'll get yeah. somebody that's willing to yeah, fill in until the 22nd at least and maybe even get a candidate out yeah. of it. Okay. So, uh, all right, Nick. Why don't we do that then? Uh, when does the board want the uh, deadline for this um, for this ad? Then when do you want would an you, application? Would you say the seventh. Well, if the if the board wanted to consider the applications on the eighth, I mean um, the reminder wouldn't be in the reminder until the third of July. Um, being the Republican, like I said, probably before Friday, um, Thursday or Friday, anyway. Well, if it's the third of July, that gives us. How many? Um, it's four days until the seventh. With the problem being that, oh, I suppose they could get it in by oh. the seventh. Sorry. Yeah, it'll it'll be in on uh, Thursday yeah. the third, and then at the same time we were going to try to, if if I understand this correctly, we're going to try to see if somebody can cover uh, at that at that, that higher period. rate. Yeah, yeah. Um, at least until the twenty second. Is that what you had said, Nick? Well, I heard the selectman. I heard conversation between the selectmen about trying to see if other towns could, uh, if agents in other towns might cover um, during the interim of the third or the t through the twenty second or whatever the date happens to be. Right. Um, if if that goes that way, then so be it. That'll be uh, beneficial to the town. My question to the board is, for the search itself. 15 hours, $22 an hour. What does the um, deadline look like? What does the interview process look like just for planning? I would say, oh, go ahead, sir. You got a calendar dinner? Yeah. So if it ends here, it'll be in the paper on that day. So if we end it either on these days, we meet on this day. So if we end that day. Yeah, if it ends this date. Right. And probably the 7th of July, Nick. So then... Uh, the end date? Mm-hmm. To get the, the applications in on the 7th, the board would have applications to consider on the 8th. 8th, yeah. And then would the board, I, I, I don't know, would the board be looking to schedule the interviews, or what does the board want to do for the selection? Let's say you have five candidates to take a look at on the 7th, I, on the 8th, I hope. Uh, what, what does the board, how does the board want to go about selecting? Through the chair, we could always call a special meeting if we had to, yeah, somewhere right, somewhere between the eighth yeah. and the twenty second, right. you know, for that sole topic, and you know. Right. Agreed. So, <coughs> what do you think we want to do it on which date? If we were to have to have a special meeting. Yeah, if we had a special. Meeting. Our meeting is regularly on the eighth. Yeah, on the eighth. And so, if we had to. The interviews. If you were to have to call a special meeting, oh boy. It would have to be either one of these two days because I am done. Then, um, about the fourth. Are you you have vacation, Paul? Are you going away yet by any chance? Uh, nothing. Nothing. Or nothing of any distance. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, so the fourteenth or the fifteenth? Fourteenth. is a Monday. Monday. Fifteenth probably be better. Okay. Just in case. Okay, Nick. Okay. 15th. Okay. I would ask that um, you would have that in the daytime. Yeah. Please. Um, mm -hmm. you depending make it, you on. You make it in the morning? I what? can make it in the morning. Hopefully, our candidates can, depending on what they're doing for a living. Then they won't be the one, really. Oh, that's true. Mm. Availability is where. Yeah, that's fine. 10 o'clock on the 15th, Nick? Okay. 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 And hopefully, that'll be the you know, candidates for the board to consider. Mm -hmm. Okay, I, I think we're at number 28, uh, Selectman. Uh, Chair? Oh, yeah, our boots are actually good. <coughs> oh, we haven't done 27, oh, I'm sorry. 6 or 5. Oh, Jesus, Lord have mercy. Okay. No, I'm sorry, that was 24, so we're at 25. Yeah. Green Lawn Cemetery. I haven't had a chance to really review that. I would ask for a little more time on that. Yeah. Well, yeah, I, I looked. I looked up that. 
Mm -hmm. saw, I mean, it's, he owned the land, he saw it cleared and everything. I don't know. I would, ask for I don't more know time. We I would just ask for more time on that one, if, uh, if you don't mind, through the chair. Six yeah, we're on 25 right okay. now. And so I guess we're going to 26. The, the cards? I don't know nothing about recycle cards. Just, um, Mr. Uh, Mr. Chairman. Oh, nice, huh? right. mm -hmm. That's all out of? Mm -hmm. Just uh, wanted to let the board know that they were put, these are annual cards that are sent out to everybody. Hopefully they're familiar to the board members. Um, they just have the recycling schedule, the trash schedule for the week, for the year starting July 1 through uh, next June 30th of 2015. If people didn't get them in the mail, uh, contact the office. Uh, we can send send one out, or they can come by and get one. They're also on the website. Okay. They're usually sent out in your um, 3D reminder, huh? That's why you uh, get them. These are uh, uh, usually sent directly in the mail uh, to every household. Have we got this in the office now? Because it, we I know have the other ones were outdated when I went to give someone one. We have uh, plenty of the new ones now. All right. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Let me read the you, rest. Here. You're at number 27. 27. Right uh, this time. Yeah. Uh, approval of a swimming pool permit for Pine Knoll. Application approved by Lori McCool. Okay. Uh, You'll entertain a motion. Entertain a motion on that. To approve it. Um, so moved. Second. Any discussion? Any discussion? No. All in favor? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, I'll get that down here. Now you will. Request from uh, Arbor Kids Daycare Center, mm -hmm. 126 Industrial Avenue. Mm -hmm. Amy Kimball. Mm -hmm. uh, well, that's a pool permit? Uh, yeah, that was, yeah, approval of swimming pool permit. Mm hmm. And application inspection of the swimming pool approved by Lori McCool, health agent. Okay. You'll entertain a motion. Entertain a motion. So moved. Second. Okay. Any discussion? No. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Lori's been busy. Yeah, she has. <laughs> That's why she's leaving. Ain't best. <laughs> That's why she's I request from Maureen Sweet Shop temporary food service permit. Friday, July 4th, 2014, 8 a.m. to 2 o'clock p.m., 4th of July parade, pending approval from Lori McCool, health agent. I don't know if she went out and checked that. Okay. Uh, so moved. on her approval. Are we going to detour in there? And are, we're going oh, through sure. The, right. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> so you, moved. You moved it. I'll, I'll second. second. Any discussion? Uh, uh, just making sure that it's pending the approval of Lori McCool, so yeah. she'll go out there. Once she approves it, sure. That's all. Is it? All, all in favor? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, there. Do you know if she not approve that? She hasn't approved it yet, but um, we we uh, just voted on Cause we're approving with, it yeah. pending her approval. Okay, so we have a correspondence from MMA. Nick? This is uh, letting the board know about uh, pending uh, uh, bills in the uh, legislature regarding wireless antennas and changes that the industry is proposing to make, and the MMA is urging um, local uh, government to support opposition uh, to those changes, and there's details in the correspondence that you have. Okay. Um, town Council. Okay, um, thank you. That's enough for tonight. You're gonna let us shake your hand last night. <laughs> oh, right. Okay. Um, Thirty-one. Correspondence from the police chief. Uh, yeah, I, 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 I tell you, the first one is just um, a notice from the chief regarding um, when the next. Academies for police candidates are available. He's given you a sheet as to what he understands to be mm -hmm. the scheduling. Mm -hmm. um, so that will fit in once to become applicable, or really once you, you go through the civil service list for 
uh, for the appointments mm -hmm. to the positions. Um, and, I, and I believe the civil service list is just a, um, that matter re refers to a prior correspondence from the chief that's really sort of resolved itself. Uh, I, I do not know what is meant by the RECC application. And, uh, I apologize for that, but I don't know. Madam what Chair, that, that, that is uh, the board had wanted to see the application for the regional emergency uh, dispatch uh, that the, the town had sent in as part of a, a joint application with other communities this spring. Um, hard copies and e files were provided to the board um, for your information. And see the civil service. All right. Um, item 32, uh, I believe that was addressed earlier. Um, the, the civil service were, were list. Um, I know there was a request. And we're still going with the same. Same list. We have. Absolutely. It's the same okay. list. We've already right. had that. Same list. Okay. Discussion. Um, I'm not aware of any updated position on the uh, item 32. I'm not mm -hmm. aware of any updated candidates' positions. Okay. Um, item 33 is to, that would be a matter involving um, pending or threatened litigation. Mm -hmm. um, it would be executive session. Mm -hmm. um, the litigation proposal from Maya is a request that they've made. The board has addressed that, responded mm -hmm. to them. We're just, we really don't know where we stand with, with them and moving forward okay. with that position at this point in time. Um, national Grid, uh, two matters are before the board. One of them has resolved itself. Um, Which one was that? That was the issue with the Meadowbrook School and the installation of uh, electrical service by National Grid mm -hmm. that had been um, approved by the uh, Department of Public Works facilities manager. Um, the agreement was forwarded to uh, the Board of Selectmen for um, execution of an easement from the town to National Grid subsequent to the close of the annual town meeting. Okay. And so um, I entered into discussions with representatives of National Grid indicating that we, we can't give them an easement without a town meeting vote. We're not going to have a town meeting until the fall. Mm -hmm. And we attempted to um, work out a resolution, one being um, proposing that there be a, um, a license, the Board of Selectmen issue a license for National Grid to go onto the uh, town property, install a service, and that we would present a request for an easement to town meeting in the fall okay. uh, for that area. Um, there was all that was rejected by um, National Grid. There was also a request by National Grid as part of the easement for an overly broad ability to uh, <coughs> enter the property mm -hmm. at any time to patrol the property to you sort of have um, almost um, ownership rights to access the property. And I had said to them, although it's not a legal issue, I said, I, this is a school. Mm -hmm. and I, I've got some concerns with just allowing um, your people without some prior notice or approval from the, at least the principal or the school department or somebody in town that you're going to be there. Mm -hmm. This is going to upset parents potentially. Mm -hmm. And in any event, we couldn't basically, we, we danced around with that for about two months. Mm -hmm. To make a, a, a short story endless, um, basically what happened, we couldn't come to an agreement. National Grid, when they finally, uh, we finally sat down and, and said, look, we got to make a decision here. National Grid agreed that they would install a service. They would not ask for a license. They would not ask for an easement. And all the town had to commit to do is in the fall, when we have a town meeting, that they would give us the dimensions of the easement that they're looking for mm -hmm. and the language as to what they need for access to the easement mm -hmm. and, if acceptable, to the board, we would then submit it to town meeting for approval. So that's where oh. we are. The service oh, okay. is going in, oh. but that's the okay. story is how right, we got good. to that point. Oh, okay. Um, a long way to get there. You, you, well, you know, I, I was sweating a little bit, and I was like, uh, well, this could no, be a problem. No, no, it's, it, well, we, okay. all, we all thought it was for a while, but it got resolved. Okay, great. Um, the other one is a request from the National Grid, uh, apparently back in the 40s, um, National Grid's predecessor came before the then Board of Selectmen and received an approval under 
uh, Chapter 166 of the General Laws to install um, an electric line that ran over uh, the major road, Shaker Road, and a few other uh, public ways in the community. Since that approval uh, 50 years ago, or 60 years ago, or 70 years ago, I guess mm -hmm. now, um, the town has approved half a dozen subdivision roadways that now run underneath that um, easement line. Mm -hmm. And so now National Grid is looking to upgrade their um, easement line and they're looking to for the board to um, approve once it's uh, for submit, submitted for them, approve um, the current location of the lines over the new public ways that have been established. And so their letter was saying you don't need to hold a public hearing. The board can just approve them uh, once they've had a chance to consider it. And so it, it's really an issue for the board to consider. Uh, I'd like to ask a question yeah, to the see. board. That, that was approved how, how many years ago? 50 years? In the 40s. Yeah, because I, I, I read that and I, I saw where there's a lot of streets that, that's going to go over, huh? There are, but they're only asking for like four or five. It seems to me there would be a lot more. Yeah. But they're only asking really for four or five, and they seem to be the streets that are in the the uh, Davis development yeah. uh, down by Shaker Road in that area. I don't know well, what the specific. Nottingham and all those. Uh, yeah, some of them. Showed going across those. Yeah. Um, but as I understand it from speaking with their representatives, the, the, the easements that they're, going to be that they're going to be requesting are those that are where they're existing now. It's, it's, yeah. There's no change or no new things going to be added. Yeah, let me ask you a question, Ms. Dunahue, is are we going to catch flack from people even though that was approved that many years ago? Because like you say, those developments went in after. You know, and and I, don't think, I don't think some of those people really knew that. Let me, let me, to answer your question, no matter what decision you're going to make on any issue, you're going to catch flack. <laughs> the question is how much and how to best avoid it. Now, you're not required by statute to hold a hearing or to have discussion, but to address that concern, you could notify the people who abut the sections of these roadways <coughs> where the request is made and say, come on in, you can see what's going on to understand it. My experience is, when people don't know what's going on, they get concerned. Where if you explain it to yeah, them, right. a lot of times they don't have any questions. It's, it's not really a big issue, but if they don't know, it becomes an issue. But the people actually have no recourse, right? I mean, because it's been approved, pre-approved no, many years uh, ago? No, I, I think you could say, no, we don't want it to run over the street. I think you could say that because they have never gotten the approvals that they needed. They're trying to clear up... Uh, a glitch, I think, in their systems where they never came back yeah. when the roads came in. I, I think people, it's one of those situations, it, as I understand it, Mr. Gorman, the line's up, service has been there, it's been there for you know, a dozen years, maybe, or somewhere in that range, where people are used to seeing it, so it's not going to be a, really a concern, mm -hmm. but someone might have a question, they might have a concern, and it can't hurt you to bring them in and say, here's what they're doing. Have, have somebody from National Grid here to explain it. Yeah. I mean, because yeah. when I say that, they, when I bought my property, it's showing an easement, or it could be an easement through my property, you know. I was wondering if that happened to those people, if they knew about it. No, I don't no. think they ever would have really known it because I, I don't... Well, if there's, a, if, there's a, if there's a blanket easement line across... Um, it, they would know about the easement line. This is cross, just this is just the area crossing the public ways that yeah. they have now. But people might have concerns, mm -hmm. so uh, you don't have to hold a public hearing. But if you wish to bring people in, you mm -hmm. have the right to do it. Yeah. Um, Excellent, Do you have any? I must say, I thought the same thing you did. That yeah. it'd be nice it, if you do nice that. National Grid come in and say this um, is what National Grid to come in and and say what's what. And have yeah. National Grid answer the questions. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, I think yeah. that would be a great idea. Um, is there a timeline? Nope. Because I didn't see one in nope. the uh, document that was provided. Um, are you inclined to uh, have a hearing? Let yes, National Grid yes come I, in? Am. I am. Yeah. I am as well, mm -hmm. Mr. Federici. So let, let them answer the question. <laughs> um, so let me ask you this. Do we um, set the date or do we allow them to... Um, 
I think you could have, uh, it might make some sense to have the town administrator contact them and say the board has determined that they want to hold a public hearing on this. Mm -hmm. uh, we'd like your people here to present your position mm -hmm. and answer questions, give us dates. Here's the board's meeting dates. Mm -hmm. Give us a date in the next couple of weeks or month or okay. two that you're available. Well, if, if there's no timeline mm -hmm. that we're talking about here, um, people go away for the summer. Yeah. So we're talking about September. How about October? Is that what September gets the people all into school and, and everything? And there's no timeline. There's no rush, no. right? Well, I, 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 there's no timeline that they specified, and the lines are already up. So they presented it as a car, as a. a oh, by the way, yeah. let's just okay, so fill let, in the grief. So let's look at October. Uh, Paul, is there anything? Um, that, any? Nothing. I don't think I've got anything. Oh, on a Wednesday evening? Okay. I don't have a problem with that, no. do you? No. Okay, so October 15th in the evening. Um, that's enough notice for them to get somebody in line to get here. It's enough notice for them to build the whole line over. I think so, it. too. <laughs> but, you know, there should be no excuses for that. So, Nick, if you could make that happen. Okay. And the final item for for open session is just a notice of withdrawal of a civil service bypass appeal. Uh, counsel for uh, the uh, candidate has filed a notice of withdrawal and a copy is in the back. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, with that said, I will. In this could be very in yes. Pardon me for interrupting, um, but is the board intending to? Uh, take action and or execute those bond agreements this evening. Well, we do need, I was, that's okay. exactly what I was right. thinking. Um, because we need, hmm. I will entertain a motion to go into executive session with regards to non-union contract negotiations to reopen and, and, pending, and pending litigation. litigation. Because to go to a whole discussion in open session may have a detrimental effect on the interests of the community. Just what he said. Um, to reopen to um, open session after a recess uh, to have the opportunity to review these documents. Um, and execute them if, and execute if determined them appropriate. If termed appropriate. So moved. Second. Uh, any further discussion? No. Nope. Um, understanding that if we can't get through these tonight, um, we can um, move it, uh, recess, and then we, we can't recess and reconvene tomorrow? No, you got to reschedule. We'd have to reschedule. And so two days from today would be on Thursday? Uh, as soon as that the uh, would be on Friday. It would be on Friday, whatever time you mean. Well, Okay, well, let's not get there yet, if we have to. Um, we can come, after we recess, we can come back and... Um, and that will and, be and part of the consideration of the motion. And that will be part session. of the consideration of the motion. So it's been first, uh, it's been moved and seconded. All uh, We've had a little discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, Selectman Gorman? Yes. Selectman Federici? Yes. Selectman Ford? Um, we're back into open session. Um, there are two things that uh, need to be resolved. One is with regards to the review of the bonding um, documents that have been uh, presented to us today. Um, we are going to, I will entertain a motion to um, reconvene on Friday at 10 o'clock to uh, have the bonding uh, document signed, um, if that is to the pleasure of our board. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there any discussion? No. Nope. Hearing none, um, all in favor? Aye. 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 The only other thing that I would like to bring up, um, there was an issue of mail being opened um, that was not addressed. Um, mail, let me say this another way. What is the expectation of somebody who is to mail something to the town hall that is addressed to any one of us, our selectmen here? I 
cannot speak to the intent mm -hmm. of some person who is mailing a letter to any one of the, of the board members. Mm -hmm. I think the issue that I need to respond to or to get an answer from the Secretary of State's office who oversees mm -hmm. the public records request is how the Secretary of State views letters and correspondence or documents or materials that are sent to a municipal office building addressed to either the office or mm -hmm. to um, a designated individual. For example, let's say the office of the Board of Selectmen, attention, um, Paul Federici. Mm -hmm. Is that letter in the eyes of the Secretary of State a letter of public record Mm -hmm. or is it a letter addressed individually to Mr. Federici, which would not be a public record. Mm -hmm. I, my own personal feeling, without doing any research on it, because I've never had to deal with this issue, mm -hmm. is that where it's addressed to the office, mm -hmm. even though it's to attention to one particular person, that it's intended to be part of the public record. Mm -hmm. But um, that may not be the intent of the sender, and it may be that the Secretary of State's office has a different interpretation of respect to that, mm -hmm. although normally they are very expansive in what they consider to be public records. Mm -hmm. So uh, a letter that's sent to you at home uh, is having no address or relationship to the um, Board of Selectmen's office, even though it may deal with what you, your, one of your duties or powers as a member of the Board of Selectmen, mm -hmm. might very well not be determined to be a public record, although a very, very broad reading of the statute could require, could, could uh, assume that it would be. But the issue of a letter sent to the Board of Selectmen's office mm -hmm. addressed to or to the attention of one of the selectmen. Mm -hmm. I need to get a spin on how the state interprets that because I, I think it's, it's it's a close call, and I think that they that I, my my feeling is that they would say that it's a public record and okay. needs to be kept uh, a copy of it needs to be kept in the office. But I reserve the right to to, to yeah, follow to up on that and get back with them. But I think answer. the public should know that currently what is happening is that if something is addressed to any of us, it is the mail is being opened. And it, it, I don't, I'm not sure of the rhyme or reason. Um, I will go as far as saying I received a packet that was addressed to me that was opened, and it was clearly not something um, that should have been opened in my eye. Um, the, I think if it is going to be that way, I think we have a, a duty to inform our constituents that if it's something of a personal nature, not to send it to this office because if they're going to be opening it, it could, if it's not meant to be seen by other eyes, then they should know that. I, I think, I, I, I don't believe that, um, I have some strong feelings about having my mail opened. I thought that was protected under law, so I would appreciate it if you would check that out. So at least we can all have the same expectations. I, I, will, get, I will get back to you and the rest of the board members with that. But just to, to sort of bring the thing more into focus, sure. that my understanding and my experience with municipal departments, that materials that are sent to the office, mm -hmm. um, the person who's in charge of that office, be it the town administrator in the selectmen's office or the director of public works in the Department of Public Works, mm -hmm. that they are designated um, usually are considered to be the keepers of the records, of the public records of that particular uh, department. And so material that is sent in to the office, usually their staff is directed to open that material and get it to the appropriate person. And without regard as to whether it's, with no, it, the assumption is that it's a public document and needs to be opened. Now, it would be. It might be different if the letter were addressed, say, to Mr. Gorman or to yourself, and it said on it "personal" mm -hmm. in large, you know, letter, red letters, it said "personal." Mm -hmm. Then there's at least a knowledge on the part of the 
employee's opening that there is an issue as to whether it's a public record or not mm -hmm. a public record. Um, but where it's just sent to the attention of, without any indication that it's not municipal, my belief is that most departments in the state, municipal departments in the state, when that mail came in, the staffer would just open the mail and put it in the pile of the person to whom it's addressed or however it's dispersed mm -hmm. to the, the members. But I, I, that's my assumption, and I and okay. I can't speak. And to I just that. I just think we need to look into that. And the the other question is with regards to letters that may be um, public record, um, i.e., the uh, chief of police. If he were to send a letter to me, when should I expect to be notified that that letter has been sent to me? Should that let should I be known about it once it's in? on an agenda or should I, as soon as it's open, should I be receiving notice of that? Again, that can be controlled by the policy and procedures adopted by the various boards or departments mm -hmm. with respect to that. But my expectation would be if there's a letter specifically addressed to an individual board of selectmen, Mm -hmm. that it would go in their mail pile and mm -hmm. whatever their practice is of coming in and reviewing their mail, that a, a letter that we came in on Tuesday would be in the pile. If they didn't come in until Friday, they wouldn't know about it till Friday. Okay. But if they came in on Wednesday, they'd know then. Unless the board's directive is when mail comes in addressed to a specific selectman, notify us that it's here or uh, fax it to us or however the disbursement is going to be made. But I, I think it's without clear direction to staff as to how those things should be handled. I think it's, they're just doing what they think is the most appropriate way to handle okay. it. I hope that answers your question. Um, I'm good at dodging I, answering questions. Yeah, I've been doing it for years. That. Right. Um, getting paid for I, it. I would look forward to hearing um, the response to that. I will, I will let you know what I find out from the Secretary of State's how they interpret that situation. I, I because they're really the driving force. It really doesn't mm -hmm. matter what I say, because if they disagree with it, then we're going to end up in an issue of litigation as to how it should be handled. So it's, it's much easier to go to them and say, tell me how you're going to enforce this so we can all play by the same rules. Okay. All right. All right. That Thank you very it much. For me. Any further conversation, sir? No. Um, okay, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Second. Uh, is there any further uh, discussion? No. Hearing none, we are adjourned for the evening, gentlemen. Uh, oh, wait. All in favor? All in favor? Aye. 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 Take care, Kathy.